Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 632, recorded Tuesday, October 16th, 2018. Something something Mac Mini. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Most job boards overwhelm you with tons of wrong resumes. That's not smart. ZipRecruiter finds the right people for you and actively invites them to apply. Now that's smart. Try it free at ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. And by FreshBooks, the ridiculously easy-to-use cloud accounting software that helps small business owners thrive. Try it free for 30 days at FreshBooks.com slash MacBreak. And by LastPass, secure every password-protected entry point to your business. Join over 43,000 businesses and start managing and securing your company's passwords today. Learn more at LastPass.com slash twit. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we talk about the latest news from Apple. And uh, Renee Ritchie, I guess, is not here because there's new Pokemon in town. Lori Gill, though, I'm happy to say, is filling in. Hi, Lori. Hi, how's it going? It's great. Deputy Managing Editor over there at iMore. You've, yes, that's uh, me. You've assumed the uh, Serenity Caldwell uh, write down everything they say on the analyst call duty, duties. I, that's 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 right. Yeah. I I cannot hold a candle to Serenity Caldwell though. She was the expert at that. I I remember times when her and I would just be sharing a hotel room and she would be up at two in the morning, clickety clack, clickety clack. <laughs> she she works hard. That's not <laughs> annoying. <laughs> hey, um, where is Renee? Is he really out and about doing Pokemon? I hope not. It's not Pokemon. I'm actually not sure what he's traveling for. He oh, said okay. he's going to be gone yeah. today and tomorrow, but he yeah. didn't say why. It's so Pokemon. it's Pokemon. That's it's right. Pokemon. It's definitely yeah. Right. It's great <laughs> to have you, Laurie. That's uh, Andy Anako from the uh, beautiful WGBH in Boston, Boston Public Radio, and Anako.com. Hello, Andrew. Hello. Oh, hello. Happy fall. Is it cold and oh. chilly now in the uh, New England area? We we, we call it crisp. Yeah, uh, it is. It is the it is the season where you'll you'll be walking in downtown and find that people have found it necessary to tie like corn stalks around like the light poles. <laughs> I love that because I lo I miss fall. That was my favorite season yeah. in Rhode Island. I just loved it. It's it re it really is quite lovely. Also, the cafe that's like around the block for me has switched from its spring and summer menu, which is just lunch and dinner, to its fall and winter menu, which is now lunch and breakfast. So it means that I can I can once again get those wonderful pancakes without having to walk more than a couple of hundred. Is that because they don't feet. like to work in the dark? No, it's because they have this beautiful like patio ah. by the water. And so they can do. So there are a lot of people who will come by for dinner by the water with the rap, yes. rippling waves, and nice. they can charge more more money for water. Whereas in the fall, there are people who just want to be in, who, who are just no. ordering or buying coffee just to stay warm. Nobody wants to stay outside. Yeah, I don't blame them. <laughs> and from the nation's <laughs> capital comes Alex Lindsay, Pixel Core. Hello, Hello. Hello. Hello, Alex. Oh, I like the flannel. That's nice. He's also dressed for winter. You know, it's it's crisp. It was crisp. <laughs> so I it, it was uh it was cold. I was I flew in last night and I and I got up and I was like, it's really cold, cold out here. there. So yeah, yeah so, <laughs> I like, so I dressed a little warmer. I like fall. I do. I love it. No, I love it being crisp. I just I, I get to dress in flannel. So Lori, just out of curiosity, did uh, did you guys get an invitation to any Apple events that might be coming up over the next couple of weeks? Not yet. We're not yet. This um, is puzzling. If, if an it, Apple event is going to happen, it's well, it, it, the invite will probably come this week, this this Friday at Friday. the latest. Yeah, yeah. but it, I mean, it could. They may not. They may not do an event. It could just be just a press announcement. Right. It could be that they're just not ready, so they're not even going to do anything at all. I mean, we haven't had a fall iPad event in a couple of years. You, the last two, I think, were in March. So, you know. It might there might not be anything else this fall at all. We'll see. Wow, <laughs> there'd be some people very upset, <laughs> so especially people who want to get their their new iPads in by exactly. Christmas. Definitely, exactly. yeah, yeah. 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 Kind of holding off. I even promised yeah. this was probably foolish. I promised somebody my old iPad, my old iPad, ten point five inch iPad Pro, <laughs> assuming that I'd have a new eleven inch 
iPad Pro uh, this year. Well, maybe not. Maybe we'll find out. If they're going to do yeah, it, they're I mean, going to do it in October. And that means we're, you know, tomorrow is two weeks from the end of the month. So they better hurry. Lately, yeah, it's might. been a two-week notice, right? It hasn't been one week. They have done one-week notice in the past. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it could be as little as one week. It, it, yeah. the, especially on an event like this. For iPhone, you, I think you kind of expect that it... You, there's more notice because everyone knows it's coming. There's no way Apple wouldn't do an iPhone event, but a fall event that's not an Apple event, um, that could potentially be just a one week notice deal for sure. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And it depends on how extensive it is. If it's really, I, I find it hard. The, the, Rumors that we have in front of us about the changes to the iPads are big enough that it's harder to imagine them not having some sort of public event that they can live stream so they can walk everybody through what makes this different and why it might be worth a thousand dollars to people. Uh, but if there's nothing else really apart from that, uh, if there's just a parenthetical. Oh, and by the way, speed bumps for the, there's a speed bump for the Mac mini and there's a speed bump for the MacBook Pros then uh, it might be the sort of thing where we don't know exactly when the, we, we, the way we find out when the launch date is, is when suddenly an embargo date breaks and 10 people or 20 people who have been using iPad Pros for the past 10 days without our knowledge uh, suddenly actually post their reviews. I think they should. Yeah. I think if it's, Mac, if, it, if it's a Mac Mini, there should be fireworks, uh, a parade. <laughs> You'll I, do I, it I really yourself is. if there's a Mac Mini. You'll throw the parade. Exactly. Right? <laughs> By the way, not only is there no Apple uh, invitation yet, we're still doing white Starbucks cups. So I just want everybody, <laughs> right? When the red cups come out, then you know the holiday season is upon us. No, no, we're, 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 I, I can pinpoint it exactly. It is the time of season where there's row after row of bags of Halloween candy. But if you look like on the end cap, there are the peanuts, uh, Charles Schultz themed uh, Christmas, deck, Christmas <laughs> barrels of popcorn. We're not there yet. We're almost there though. Almost. Yeah. You, you still you still have at least a week and a half to, to complain about pumpkin spice. Lori, you're a Halloween fan. Oh, such a big Halloween fan! It's yep. my favorite time. What's of your the costume year. this year? Um, I'm go. Uh, my me and a group of friends of mine are going as the characters from Metalocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. I yeah. don't even I'm know what that is. Lost you're going to be one of those <laughs> trick or treaters that I go. Oh, that's a cute costume. What the hell are you? Yeah. Metaloc Metalopicus? Metalop Meta Metalocalypse. It was a, ca a cartoon that was based on um, like death metal bands, or one death metal band that and it was really hilarious. And if you know anything about metal music, they actually did a really, really good job of kind of um, making fun of the genre and stereotyping the, the kinds of people that would be in bands like that. And there's even these great little... Um, little Easter eggs in the background. Like I think the grocery store that they visit is called Burzum, which is Burzum's grocery store, which is the name of a of a death metal band. Oh, that's so, hysterical. Yeah, are you so the guy like, with the mustache and the and the gap tooth, or which one are you? The uh, the one actually that <laughs> is uh, the one with the longer hair with the little uh, Fu Manchu style uh, ah, goatee that's, on the right that's there. hanging down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that should yeah. be an interesting costume. The black T-shirt's <laughs> easy, but the Fu Manchu mustache—that'll right? be a challenge. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna cut some of my hair and glue it to my face. It'll be easy. <laughs> <laughs> At least it'll match. <laughs> Andrew, do you get trick or treaters in your uh, neck of the woods? Uh, this will actually be my first year with trick or treaters uh, because it's kind of again kind of a downtowny area. There is sort of like a trick or treat night that uh, to try to bring people in and like buy booze fun. and stuff like that. Uh, I might, I may or may not be home for it though, which is a bummer because I kind of I I enjoy being the person who gets the deep gets. I I, I really I really really like like when uh, people like Lori like go for like the deep catalog reference. <laughs> where it's like every, where everybody's saying, oh, look, isn't that an adorable elf? And I'm the one who said, oh, awesome Link costume. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and, and the, the, the look in this kid's, these kids' eyes, like, finally, somebody who knows that TV show or somebody who actually plays video games who understands that this is uh, – so, uh, so I, I think my, I, you're going to get a bunch of people saying, are you Steve Tyler? They're not going to know who the hell you are. So that's yeah. the fun of it, isn't it? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Actually, the, the group of people I hang out with all know who Metalocalypse is, they so do. they'll get that joke. Of course they do. <laughs> and uh, Alex, you're not probably dressing up, but I bet you the kids will be. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yes, the, the kids are, uh, I think um, Malachi is talking about being V for Vendetta. And I was like... Oh, nice. You I have the mask. You know, he wants to borrow it. I was like, you know, that, that that's really like something that's used by Anonymous. And he goes, yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> your like, kid is hip. I was hip. like, there's my son. There's my son. That's so, my son. So anyway, so, so, uh, so he's, he's going there. And then, and then yeah. we're doing a little Arduino project with uh, Isabella's. So here's gonna, my... Uh, I shouldn't telegraph stuff. this, but here's my costume. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all ordered and ready. It does involve yeah. a fan in the butt. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, those hands, uh, you can't you can't hold or touch anything because they're <laughs> sealed. So basically be trapped inside an inflatable Pikachu. Mm. <laughs> See, that's <laughs> but it's but it's it's comfortable. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll be sweating until you try to sit down. No, I won't be sweating. It's inflated. That, exactly. I'm saying. I'm saying you won't be. Yeah. That way you won't be sweating. It's built in I've air got, conditioning. Yeah. I, I have. I, I will say that I there's one Comic Con like in New England remaining for the season, and I might break out a project I've been working on for the Ooh, past two or three years. It's a. Fun. It is a deep catalog costume. It's not diff. It's there. It's assembled out of things that are readily excuse me that are off the shelf items but you have to find the exact right off the shelf items so it, it depends if i oh, if Andy, I, you're not going to go as tin foil man again no 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 i mean pe people uh, I, I know that at new york comic con a couple years ago i went as bill cunningham and no that oh, yeah. and nobody got it nobody got it wow this this way you, you'll have to be of, of a certain age to get it and, but the, I think those people who they, if they get it, are going to be very, very pleased. But I, mean, I, I think I, I, I was, I was, I was really aggressive about doing Halloween until I was working at Lucasfilm and ILM when oh, yeah, competing yeah. with guys <laughs> in the model shop were yeah, no, no fun no, at all. Yeah, like no. someone came, it was, it was, uh, someone came, you know, the Toy Story, you know, the, the little, uh, you know, the, the, the claw, the claw, you know, that, you know, it, but <laughs> yeah, they the came as skin. the entire apparatus and one of them was hanging oh, from the funny. claw. funny. You know, oh, and, and like funny. moving around, you know, and, and uh, you know, it would be it was like a lot of that. And so you either played <laughs> yeah. really hard or you just didn't play. Just I just play. came as a Scotsman. I have, I have a kilt. So I was yeah, like, where I came kilt? as a Scotsman yeah. every year. I was every just year. like, ah, yeah. killed. Maybe somebody yeah. will come as the 2018 iPad Pro design. These renders give you some idea. Perhaps they were uh, shared on Twitter based on uh, leaks from Ben Geskin. This is uh, according to the leak. This will be a 5.86 millimeter thick iPad. That's, uh, and that's hopefully and hopefully with a flexible screen. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, no I'm kidding. That's a lot, bend. lot thinner. Um, well, I mean, you're not going to try to put that in your back pocket, are you? I hope. Not. <laughs> well, no, but but I, I I keep a lot of stuff in my bag, and you know, I, yep. I my current one is already thin enough where I worry a little bit about where it's being supported in my backpack because I'm afraid it's going to get pushed up against something. Getting much thinner would make me. Yep. More stressed. Square that, exactly square corners, kind of i iPhone four style uh, squared corners on this thing, according to the leak. I really like that look. I hope they do that. I I love that on the on the four inch phone. The iPhone SE looks the same. I love yeah. that that yeah. squared corner thing. Yeah. Uh, I wish I'm we just, would go back to it. <laughs> I'm just curious, and I just don't know how. Uh, I I'll, I can't wait to get my hands on it to see how I adjust to having so little bezel to deal with on a device that's that where where you really can't just like sort of cradle it in your hand like a phone you really do have to if you're not if you don't have it on an easel you are really gripping it on in some way shape or form and i know they do a lot of like there, there's a lot of uh, algorithms in there to make sure that to tell the difference between uh the his this is an incidental touch on the edge of the screen versus no this was a that's gonna be a the challenge touch. yeah but and uh it's a I I, uh, I I hope that this is a practical choice as opposed to a stylistic choice, because I, I think that there might be some circumstances which you'd like to have a little bit of of, of uh, out of play space that you can hold things and you can grip things. You can have your case kind of like grab it by the sides. I don't think but you're we'll alone in that fear. But on the other hand, I think that the what's driving it is not merely style and fashion, but the fact that people have the expectation like customers well, don't want bezels yeah. anymore. I see a bezel well, well, now well, also, and I go, oh boy, yuck. Well, also, it's 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 amazing to have a device that's pretty much the same size as the one you have got two or three years right. ago, but the screen is magically this much bigger. So you don't have to get a bigger bag. You don't have to uh, adapt that way. So that's a, that's definitely a win for yeah. sure. Yeah. 
Uh, I think, I, yeah, I think the Apple Watch Series 4 is a perfect example of that. It actually yeah. doesn't really look much bigger on your wrist, but the screen real estate makes it look enormous to look at. And I think the iPad would give that kind of vibe too if it if it lost all its bezel. But I completely agree. I, I'm constantly accidentally touching my iPhone XS and just kind of moving it or opening something that I didn't intend to. And that's with the ability to grip around the edges of it. So an iPad that you would hold with both of your hands, how do you not grip or touch something or, or trigger something on accident if there's zero bezel? You might open an app that just happens to be off the edge or something like that. There might be a brisk market for uh, cases that give you a little more to hold <laughs> on the edge, right? A little handle on the side. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, I know, pop sockets for uh, yes, iPad size pop sockets. Pop sockets. There you go. <laughs> yes. What I don't know uh, yet, based on, anyway, these renders, which are based on the leaks, is where the Face ID camera will be. There's obviously no fingerprint reader, no home button. I think the rumors that we're hearing is that it will be in the, um, on the what side. you might call the top, not the side, but oh, what you top? call the top. Okay. But it would be, um, it would also support landscape, whereas our, the iPhone 10 and up, um, you actually have to be holding it upright to use Face ID. The rumor is that on the iPad, even though it's going to be at the top of portrait, you can still hold the iPad and landscape oh, in it. So it'll when you say at the top, it. you mean at the side. <laughs> <laughs> Who uses so, yeah, an so iPad I mean, in portrait mode? If this mode? were an iPad, it would be, you know, up there at the top. Nobody uses I mean. the iPad in portrait mode though, right? Comic books, I, comic I book readers. I read magazines. So, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Books. So rarely. Where's my iPad? I'm just, what, did I, what did you guys do with my iPad? Anyway, I just wanted to, so you're saying it'll be, Lori, on the short side, one of the short sides. On the short side, that's yeah. That's the actually, rumor. And, I'm, I'm and it will rumor. work. <laughs> and it, yeah, all rumor. And and yeah. and then that's the question is, have they figured out a way to get Face ID to work? Now, I have to say, again, these are renders, so I don't, I don't understand what they're thinking. Oh, here's my iPad. I don't understand what you're, they're thinking in terms of where there's camera room for a Face ID. Wouldn't it be bad yeah, if you had to turn no the notch. thing around, say, okay, unlock it, and then turn it the other way? That would be challenging. Yeah, that would be really bad. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't yeah. think they'd even include it if, they had to, if you had to do that. So this yeah. is kind of, I'm, you know, Apple's already solved this, right? Because they're presumably making them. Maybe not. Maybe yeah, not. I think they may not. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I, I think they're re I think they're really well motivated to do that. Not to, not really for style purposes, but really the the user interface of the of iOS is moving toward moving away from having a physical home button. So I think just getting that home button off the screen is a really really big deal for them because it's not just it's again it's not just style, but they're trying to teach a new vocabulary. And everything saying there is no you do not touch. The, the basic instructions are not touch the home button to get to back to the launcher. It's swipe up from the bottom or swipe down from a corner. So they want to make that consistent. And part of that involves getting rid of touch ID. So now you have to find another, another solution for that. So I think that they're, I think they're super well motivated to, to do this. You know, it's funny, uh, Lori, that you refer to the larger screen on the Series 4. Apple did such a good uh, job of concealing the bezels on earlier versions of the Apple Watch that it's not immediately obvious that that screen is bigger. The only place you really see it is when you enter the passcode and those buttons are so much bigger. Well, I mean, I mean I, the interface itself entirely is bigger. bigger. And yeah. For me, yeah. it's like just the, the text itself is, is larger. Did you get the 44? Um, uh, no, the 40. Okay, so did you move, you move from a 38 to a 40? Correct, yeah. yeah. See, I'm on the 44, which is obviously even bigger. Even bigger, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is. It does feel use, more usable, but again, you, we didn't see the bezels because the whole thing was just kind of this black blob. So we right, it, it yeah. looked bezel-less, even though right. it wasn't. Yeah, they, yeah. they fooled yeah. everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Laura, did you, did you just invent a really wonderful word, bezel us, B-E-Z-E-L-O-U-S? That's because that's, that's, <laughs> if, if, not, if not, you should yes. claim credit for yes, that because that, that is a wonderful bezel That is a wonderful word. Bezel-less. It's bezel-less. <laughs> patent uh, pending, patent actually, pending, patent pending. <laughs> is that or is, is or is that one of the bands of Metalopolis? Metal <laughs> Metal Eclipse. Wow. <laughs> Another thing that it feels like people have kind of forgotten about is the iPhone 10R, which is coming out 
this month too, right? Yeah, yeah the uh, pre-orders go up on Friday. Yeah. Uh, Thursday night, midnight, Friday morning, midnight, depending on how you put it. <laughs> and apparently uh, Apple is opening its new London store Friday, October 26th to coincide with, look at this, it's very pretty in Covent Garden. To coincide with, have you been to that one? I have not. It's beautiful. I mean, it, it, when I, I I went, I've been in it a couple times, and it's uh, you just walk in, and you're like, holy smokes, you know. And, and this, I think this is one of the first ones that I went into. Maybe the one in Paris is also feels that way, but but this one just had this very uh, classic look. Before this was before the uh, the one that was in in the train state, you know, in in um yeah. in New this York. This is where uh, the only Station. the only connection I have to this is this is where. Uh, the flower girl was selling flowers in My Fair Lady. It's the only connection I know to, to this, right? That's where uh, Mine was Liza Doolittle was. Looking for, <laughs> I was desperately looking for an Ethernet to lightning. Ah, <laughs> connection. There, well, so, same thing, right? Yeah. So um, Apple, these are the Apple beautiful... Go ahead. Apple serves credit for this sort of thing. They, there are so many like places around the world where they were public spaces that were in danger of being turned into like a private business or private building that are being cared for they're being loved they're being renovated and they are still on some level a public space because if you're unless you actually pitch a tent and they have your mail delivered you're welcome to come into an apple store no matter who you are so and it's i realize i realize that they're looking for great pieces of real estate that uh, will will show off everything to their greatest advantage but nonetheless there are all these spaces that could have been some foo-foo place where there are people at the door to keep out riffraff like me but it's still a very beautiful place where people can go. So I'm glad that they're doing this sort of stuff. Will uh, anybody be buying a iPhone XR? I know. I guess I will just so we can show it. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I still don't know what to tell people that I, I still I, I really keep for now. I've been telling people that hold off for the 10 uh, for the 10 R because all the stuff, most of the really, really cool stuff. Uh, that uh, are, are you you're going to get with a, with a cheaper device, and my philosophy has always been that if you can get the if you can get a, a cheaper model but max out the storage versus getting a better model that has less to, less storage to deal with, uh, I'd much rather have the additional storage, particularly when you have a camera that shoots really good 4K. So I the, it's the same CPU. Uh, you don't get dual cameras on the uh, as the as the main camera, but you get one, and Apple knows how to leverage that really really well. But it's the same wide camera that you get on the more expensive model. You get cheaper materials, but aluminum works just great. Instead of uh, surgical stainless steel, you get an, uh, an LCD display instead of OLED. But Apple made <laughs> made great uh, made great OLED excuse me LCD displays uh, up until the iPhone 10. So I'm I really think I I don't think that the uh, that the 10s is a bad phone, but I. I, I really think a lot of people are going to have to think hard about where they want to spend that extra 250 bucks. I agree 100%. I think this is going to maybe going to be the the iPhone of the year is the 10R. This is a picture from Apple's store site. By the way, as Lori mentioned, you can pre-order on the 19th this Friday and uh, delivery will be a week later on the 26th. The uh, screen is the same size, maybe even actually it's a little bigger than the iPhone 8 Plus in a smaller phone. Yeah. So I think that's a that's pretty spectacular. That, that really delivers. Even with the notch, it's a it's a taller screen. Um, so, and those colors. Yeah, they they're, they're oh, yeah. really selling the <laughs> LCD. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, also the colors of the the colors of the phone themselves. I oh, the colors. Like, yes. Yeah, Lori, Lori, Lori reminded me. Ah, yeah. I want like, the red. I, I, I want the red. That's the beautiful. Phone. You, you want the, the phone. you want the yellow? I've always been the the kind of person who says I hate the color yellow, but for some reason on the phone. On the, on the iPhone X uh, 10R, you guys have got me saying X now. Um, <laughs> it is banana, I, it, isn't it? I think it's a really good color. Yeah, it's pretty I really banana. Like it. So the color choices are white, black. Who would buy white or black when you could choose kind of a light blue, a yellow that is a you know yellow submarine yellow, coral they call it, uh, which is a kind of it's not pink, it's not red, it's a little more orange red. And then the, I love the product red stuff. That's uh, that is a nice vibrant red. That'd be a beautiful phone. And are these are these glass back? Is that is that what is the uh, material on this? Do we know? Uh, I don't know. I don't think those are glass black. Uh, these glass are metal backs. Back. I I believe that's that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So no wireless charging if they're metal. No. Backs. No. Exactly. Yeah. I'm 
pretty sure that yeah. that's that I'm. I'm so you're going to get the banana phone? Are wrong. you going to really get the banana phone? Here's pricing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> frankly, uh, my heart is still breaking for the fact that they got rid of the SE. So you know. yeah, this is this is a great choice for people who would buy the SE or. You know, an older phone. Well, not really, though. We, we're we not buying... We, uh, those of us who love it's the still SE, big. we don't love it because yeah. of the price. We love it because of the size. And yeah. the XR is actually larger than um, than the XS. Yeah. So that's actually why I chose the XR was that... or Sorry, the XS. When I decided which one I was going to pick was the width of the XS is more compatible with my size, the size of my help hands. Help us, Corgi, in our chat room saying they are glass backs and they do have wireless charging. They are glass backs? Yeah. Uh, uh, that's what the chat room's telling me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll, yeah, go, was, I'll look at the specs. I was worried that I might be wrong on that. It is the, yeah, but is, 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 is I'm it? with Lori. It's like I kept, <laughs> it's like there, there, there are things I need to, uh, we're, we're, we're trained to write, <laughs> which means that we, we can actually double check and make sure we've got things correct. Yeah, I'm putting and you on so, the spot. Yeah. I know, and and it's one of those things where you know, if you ask me about the 10s or the 10s Max, I probably know all the spec details of right. that. But because yep. the 10R hasn't come out yet, yet, I haven't yeah. like memorized all those details. So, so I apologize but, for that. Well, and I'm looking at the spec sheet, and I still it's still not not obvious. Yeah. So. Yeah, it come, I mean, that's it comes back that here's an, wireless charging is another feature that you don't lose by saving 250 bucks or spending that money on 128 or 256 gigs of storage. Right. So I think I, I think you, I'm really recommending that people go to the Apple store, look at both of them side by side or actually but be, actually better yet, look at the uh, the 10 R first, spend like a half hour with it and then. Go to the 10s. See if you no, you notice huge differences that you can't live with, right. uh, can't live without. Uh, otherwise, again, I think you're gonna I think you're gonna love having uh, an extra 64 or 128 gigs of storage uh, versus having an OLED screen or and a, and a second telephoto lens. So the pricing is uh, for a 64 gig model, it's 750 dollars, and if but you think, go, but you the way go, that most people are going though, the question is really how much is it per month. <laughs> oh, well, that's you know. true. And that's and by the way, Apple really highlights that thirty seven dollars and forty one cents a month for sixty four mm -hmm. gigs, thirty nine fifty or eight hundred dollars for one hundred twenty eight gigs and forty three sixty six a month or nine hundred dollars for two hundred fifty six. So, yeah, it's roughly. Uh, well, I don't know. What did I pay? I think it's, like, I think it's, I think it's about a 20 bucks difference per month. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's a significant. No, it's not even 20 bucks. Oh, oh, from the other phone. I got it. Yeah. From the Max, from the Max, from the Max. phone yeah. uh, with one. Is that, yeah. Is that, is that, yeah from, but yeah, it's somewhere between 15, 15 and twenty dollars per month difference. Yeah, that's a big difference, for yeah. for people. Yeah, um, and I think this you make no sacrifices with this phone unless you're dead set on dual lenses or OLED. Yeah. Um, let's look at the uh, yeah fifty four the uh, the uh, iPhone XS Max starts at fifty four dollars a month, so it is it's. Uh, a significant difference and you don't you can't get banana <laughs> you can't get banana you can't get banana you're stuck with gold you'll be stuck with gold instead of banana, banana. Uh, dumb old gold two, basically 250 <laughs> bucks 250 bucks more um I, you know i i think the 10r is going to be the the killer of a of the family but we'll see yeah isn't it? I mean, isn't it great? This is not this is not the sort of thing we kind of associate with uh, with Apple. We might have expected them to say, "Well, we're going to reserve the iPhone 10, we're going to the the 3D 3D uh, Face ID camera, the edge to edge display, all these features. We're going to reserve that for the thousand dollar price point. But we're going to continue to make really fine pri uh, phones at our old price point that will always have the, uh, a modern processor and be able to take advantage of modern features. They are they have they made it a thousand dollar phone last year but now they really made it this is now the default phone they were able to get that price down not as low as what uh, an iphone uh, an iphone 9 hypothetically would have been but still that's that's i'm glad to see apple being able to say let's figure out a way to bring these really exclusive features down into the mainstream well, and and but you can also see what you know. They have persuaded us now that an eight hundred dollar phone is the bargain phone. You know, so they've they've uh, very carefully moved that ASP. Seven hundred forty nine dollars. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Seven hundred forty nine. Yeah, there we go. Ming Chi Kuo, the, our a Chinese Apple analyst, says that um, sales of the four major Chinese brands were down during Golden Week, which is a big buying week, by ten percent year over year. And he says that bodes well for the iPhone 10R. Here's an opportunity. Maybe people aren't buying, expecting to get to the 
the 10R. Or it could be, I don't know, well, trade war issues. I'm not sure. Um, so that, but that may be a, a, a bellwether too, that there's interest in uh, the Chinese market as well. Let's take a little break. When we come back, there's lots more to talk about. Lori Gill is here from iMore. She is deputy managing editor. And when Renee is out of town, she takes over for him here as well as there. You Do you not know where he is or do you know where he is, but you're not allowed to say? No, I, I am not just saying that. I actually don't know where he is. I think he's in New York. but I'm, I'm pretty sure, sure if Renee's not on the show, he's in New York getting briefed on new iPads or maybe the 10R. But the fact that Renee is not here I, always, to me, tells me there's new Apple products in the pipeline. I don't know why. I like it when he's not here because that means I get to be here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't yes. tell him, but we like it, too. <laughs> we always love having Laurie on. I'm always trying to send him away on some kind of business. <laughs> go to work. Go to work, won't you? <laughs> Andy Anako is here, as always. He doesn't have anything to do. WGBH Boston, Anako.com. I prefer to say that my highest priority is my responsibility <laughs> to the many, many listeners of this show. Yeah, I'm usually here too, Randy. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, Alex Lindsay of the Pixel Core, who is today in Washington, D.C. on business. Yep. Unspecified. So that beautiful view in the background is not just a, a facade. That's the actual backdrop of your it, where you're at right now. It, it is a facade, but but it's a <laughs> it's a but it's a um, it's exactly uh, what it looks like. But that it's right. It's nearby. You can. Alex, so yeah, th this is this is the world that Alex lives in. He could just simply open a window behind him, but he doesn't like the total contrast <laughs> exactly. in the actual Capitol building. Exactly. He'd much rather have control have over the lighting that. and the shading. <laughs> Why don't we just take a picture? We have we have done ones where we took the video camera and we stuck it like slightly at a different angle, you know, outside and kind of turned it. And uh, and then put it in the monitor behind it because, you know, the frame of the Swiss mountains were better from there. And we didn't want to the, the frame behind our thing was just other office buildings. So it was ugly, we, real mountains. What? Yeah, we uh, offset it by like four feet. <laughs> by the way, speaking of that, Andy, I did go out and get a, a, a Aurora from a, the uh, uh, Skylum folks uh, based on your recommendation last week. And then. Went back through all my pictures uh, from my trip and redid them all because you're absolutely right. It just is wonderful. Uh, it's, just, it's just the coolest thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm rehanging I, without getting into a huge, huge rat hole. I, I got to, I've been rehanging like old family pictures that I took down from uh, the last move, and I'm taking them up. Oh, geez, well, that, a that one was. Uh, I, I I did that in Photoshop circa nine uh, circa circa like 2003, and plus the colors have faded a little bit. Even just without having the negative, if I just put that picture in a scanner, uh, not not just fixing the color that had faded, but I can now do so much better. Uh, there's a uh, there, there's a picture of, of the the one time I managed to get the entire extended family together in front of mom and dad's house, like as a huge huge group, and was so concerned about getting everyone positioned right and getting the lighting right, and getting the flash right. I forgot to ask my dad to close the front door behind him, oh. so you can see like. And so I finally like added the front. I finally closed the front door in Photoshop. The one thing that annoys me about that picture, I, I can't recommend high, highly enough. Every now and then, when you get a brand new tool, go Go back into your old favorite photos and you'll be amazed at how much better your 1999 Sony, uh, 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 your, your Nikon Coolpix camera can be uh, <laughs> after uh, running it through modern apps. I'll give you actually uh, an example if I can go back far enough in time. There was a picture I took in Barcelona that I, I love the composition of, but I just, it was, it didn't come out as I had seen it, you know, as I was there. Yep. And uh, and I went back. Let me let me skim way back here because this was at the beginning. Actually, you know what? If I search for Barcelona, I could probably find it faster. Google Photos very good in that. Yeah. So I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you the original. Actually, it's this uh, or something like this. Yeah, I think that's the original. And then I'll show you. Uh, so and I run it through Aurora. And uh, let's see. Let's let's find that in Aurora. And uh, it just, it saved the picture as far as I'm concerned. It made it a very interesting image. So let me yeah. do that again. That's before, that's after. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not subtle. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of HDR. And I think. No, no, no. Of, I, mean, I mean, I'm saying the improvement. It, it is. A, well, this was unusable. Subtle. It was just, you know, too dark to really, uh, to really use it. It was one of these. And, yep. uh, you know, it's my fault for not a great exposure, but it was also, you know, it was a difficult day. You see the light in the background mm. was really, was really fooling it. And uh, yeah, that, didn't fool Aurora. 
Yep. I like the grain it added in the clouds too. Actually, <laughs> I, 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 oh, I, I love the you got you got streams of heavenly light bursting yeah. in through. through yeah, right? that's very. They nice. were there, but I, you just could barely yeah. see them. That's all. It's so, so li it's so liberating in photography when you realize that your job is not to present an image as it was when you took the picture. Right. Your job, your most, your greatest value is when you present something the way that you remember it, looked. it being. Yes. And so I was very happy to be able to, yeah, to get to get to recover my pictures, basically. <laughs> so thank you for a, for a great recommendation. They uh, we're going to get Scott Bourne, who is now on their board. He's a longtime yes. member of the MacBreak family. He's now on their advisory board, and he, of course, he's a great photographer, and he's done some wonderful things. We're getting him in in December. I'm I'm seeing him next week. Not uh, sure why he'll be here in December, but there'll be a reason, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be talking more, more about that. I'm really, really a fan of their stuff. Hey, let's yeah. take a little break. Come back with uh, more of our guests. Also, uh, I mentioned all three of you, all of you. Yes. You're great. Our show today brought to you by zip recruiter. If you're doing some hiring, you know, be, and if you're in a small business like ours, or if you're a sole proprietor, hiring is a big deal because it's, it's like you're out, you're down a person. It's like a, a hockey team. With a couple of people in the penalty box, you're down a few people and you're busy. You're doing a lot more because of it. And still you have to find a replacement. That happened to us actually a few months ago. Our bookkeeper announced she was leaving. She gave us a couple of weeks notice. And then Lisa's going is frantic because that means she's going to have to pick up the slack and do all the bookkeeping. And she's got to find a replacement. And it was at breakfast. We're sitting over the table. I said, well, this is a perfect time to try ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter is fantastic because... A, it posts your job listing everywhere to about more than 100 job sites with just one click of the mouse. And the beauty of that is you're going to reach out to as many people as possible. But B, they do something remarkable. They actually find people for you and, and invite them to apply for your job. They're, they're using some powerful matching technology to scan all the resumes they have on file, which is many hundreds of thousands, identifies the people with the right skills, education, experience, and then invites them to apply, which means you get qualified candidates fast. I, we talked about it at breakfast. Lisa put it up on ZipRecruiter. Before lunch, we had three uh, candidates. And, and he, as each one came in from ZipRecruiter, she said, wow, this is good. Oh, wow, this is really good. Wow, this person's perfect. It was really remarkable. Within a few hours, that is, you don't have to wait for the right candidate to apply to your job. ZipRecruiter is smart. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak to hire the right person. Of course, all those resumes, all those applicants, they don't call you. They don't send you email. It all goes into the ZipRecruiter interface. They reformat the resumes so they're easy and fast to read. You can have, uh, you know, questions to screen out people who, are, who don't fit. You, 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 can, uh, you, can, you can rank them real fast. You can eliminate people you don't want and find the right person fast. It's number one. Among employers in the United States, according to Trustpilot, over a thousand reviews. Number one. Really impressive stuff. Tries, and right now you can do it for free, so why not? Try it for free at uh, ziprecruiter.com slash MacBreak. If you use that address, they know you heard it here, and we like that. ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. We hired a great bookkeeper fast, and we thank ZipRecruiter, not only for that, but also for our, their support. ZipRecruiter.com. Slash Mac break yet had a very happy uh, ending. Phil Schiller, speaking of photography, was a, a surprise visitor at Adobe Max yesterday. And well, lo and behold, what did he preview? A full version of Photoshop on the iPad. It'll be coming next year. Sh Schiller said it's not watered down. It is Photoshop with all the assets and tools you need to create the same projects you can do on the desktop, but you're doing it on the iPad. Um, I'm, I'm curious about that. I mean, I saw I saw the announcement. I there's part of me is like, really everything? <laughs> well, doesn't no. To be fair, doesn't Affinity Photo do much of what I uh, Photoshop does? It on does, the but I, th I think that what has me go back to Photoshop is that it's always missing like little details that you use in Photoshop that right. are very obscure. Uh, you know, certain selection tools or channel operations um, that that I think are there. I think Affinity Photos, and I use Affinity Photo specifically for. Uh, 360 editing. You can uh, you can put it into a 3D space right. and rotate it up and paint out your tripod if you're taking 360 photos or video, and um, and so it's the best thing for that. Um, but uh, 
so I use Affinity Photo, but I, I don't find myself, and I have the same problem with Pixelmator, is that you, I've been using Photoshop since 1991, so it's really hard for me to, to transition to, uh, to the new apps, uh, which are now not that new. Um, and, uh, but I, I look at it when they say that it's everything. I'm just like, I just have a hard well, time believing that everything went in. I feel like there's little marketing there. I mean, I I'll, think you're I, right. Cause I they say, was, they don't but. say feature complete. <laughs> they, yeah. they specifically yeah. don't say feature complete. So they say everything you need. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that it's going to be great. And I think that for folks like me that want to do stuff in Photoshop, but still, you know, want to do it on our iPad, but can't quite. Uh, you know, I think that there is a big market for it, and I think it's a great idea for Adobe. I just think that when they say it's the full version, I was like, uh, maybe. Well, I, I think maybe they mean full file compatibility, uh, including layers, including macros, including that sort of stuff. It's uh, right. it's uh, when re you realize that when you when they make promises to the Photoshop community, these are people who are making lots of money with Photoshop. These aren't just like people like me who occasionally want to like take a right. leaf off of someone's face. Uh, so if they make promises they can't deliver, oh my God, they'll be so horrible. But the well, but the, big, I, but, the big, think, but the big but the big deal is just the ability to take a project you've been working on on the desktop, take it with you uh, on the on the iPad, or get started with something uh, on the train home from a photo shoot or whatever, and then not have to import it, uh, not have to uh, not have to even, uh, as you say, to kind of uh, translate the skills you've been developing in Photoshop for the past ten years and say, what does it mean in Procreate to have a layer, or how does this brush tool work in Procreate? Right. Mm -hmm. So. There were other announcements that uh, Mac users will, and iPad users will be interested in Adobe Max. They did release Premiere Rush, a uh, Creative Cloud video editor, much simplified version of Premiere, which does run on the iPad. But Rush is intended to be completely cross-platform uh, on iOS, on Android, and even in uh, uh, on Chrome OS as a, as a Chrome plugin. And so that's very intriguing. I mean, you wouldn't uh, abandon uh, Premiere... Um, but Rush is, uh, is uh, you know, Premiere compatible and more powerful than Premiere Clip or Premiere uh, Elements, So, that, according to Adobe. So that's, that's interesting. I immediately installed it on my iPad. I've been playing with it a little bit uh, on uh, Chrome OS, and I, I thought that was pretty impressive. Premiere Rush is uh, $9.99 a month unless you have an all-apps plan. Yeah. Adobe, we, everyone was really, including myself, was kind of concerned when they went from a buy it and own it model to a subscription only model. But I got to say that they really have delivered. Uh, they continue to add features that maybe I wouldn't have been willing to spend an extra fifty dollars for, or an extra uh, an extra eighty or ninety dollars for. Their mobile uh, arm of this uh, of uh, the Creative Suite is just gobsmackingly good for you consider how well you, how well adobe lightroom works on a chromebook essentially on a web browser uh and yes they, yes they're they're taking kind of the easy way around it because they're not making a real mac native app it is the adobe photoshop inter interface that's been translated here and there but for once for one manageable fee per month to get access to the entire this entire library of uh, of, of apps and also all of these great little features that keep popping up uh, and anytime I want to do something really fancy in Photoshop, it's I, I kind of have to train myself to do do a web search to on I want to I want to make someone who's looking to the left look like they're looking upwards uh, and, and find and as before I'm about to do two hours for the work find out that oh well there was a uh, there's a, there is a new feature that pushed out three weeks ago that's all about eyeball <laughs> eyeball adjustment just highlight the eyes and then pull them to where you want this person to be looking at and you're gone uh, that's not an actual feature but that's I'm sure that that's something they're working. On, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. They keep they keep justifying the amount of money I give them by keeping giving me features that make really barbarously difficult things really easy. I am, however, anxious to see what Skylum does uh, with their their dam, their digital asset management, because Luminar, which is awfully good, and uh, and we were just talking about Aurora, and if they do a if they do a, something that can, right now, you know what Elisa does? She uses Luminar and uh, Aurora. And she just uses Apple Photos as her uh, asset management tool, keeping track of everything. It exports fluidly, and it really works quite well. So it's not a bad choice. Lightroom is being updated somewhat. Um, Apple Photos migration tool, if you want to move out of Photos into Lightroom. Uh, a new Sensei-powered people view, improved search, and new sharing options. 
And then uh, Adobe's a design tool XD, which I don't use, so I'm not familiar with. Um, that's fairly new, and they're going to add voice capabilities this fall to XD. I don't even... Apparently, you can use Amazon Echo <laughs> uh, with the interface, uh, you know, zoom in, enhance. I don't know. I don't know what the commands will be. Uh, Photoshop for iPad and something called Project Gemini, which is uh, complementary to Photoshop. That'll be coming in 2019. The early stage project, according to 9 to 5 Mac, aims to offer a consistent drawing and painting surface across experience across all surfaces. So no matter what you're using, product jet product project Gemini Gemini the twins sounds like they want to uh, somehow I don't know twin their applications in all on all platforms. <laughs> um, closed pre-release on iOS is uh, available now for professional in illustrators. So a lot of announcements uh, at uh, the, yeah, the event. Uh the most, the most fun part of that show is always when they just do this magic show <laughs> where they say, here are I things love that. that we're working on. Yeah, we yeah. don't we don't have any timetable for releasing these, but here is <laughs> that it's it's going to be something that I think that's when they introduced uh, content to where Phil the <laughs> the ability is just to simply say, here is here is my brother in law who my my sister fortunately just divorced and I want him gone from this picture from the family cookout. And you circle the brother in law and you say content aware Phil and suddenly either it's it's Nick it's almost matchless or it's basically takes five seconds worth of tweaking to finish it up. And that's the sort of stuff they show off. Things they they don't have they they have enough for a really great demo, but not enough for a release yet. And you're it's it's the it's usually at that that, that wonderful intersection between really, really cool, really, really useful, and really, really <laughs> creepy. <laughs> the uh Gemini will be interesting because it's iPad first. So uh you know, their focus, so, and I guess it's a drawing app, they say, designed to simplify drawing and painting workflows with a simple cross-device support, mm -hmm. combining the raster imaging of Photoshop with the vector imaging of uh, Adobe Illustrator and dynamic brushes into a single experience ideal for drawing and content. Yeah. That's a, an ambitious project. Wouldn't it be wonderful if one of the things that they're working on, either for this app or for just Photoshop in general, is to uh, is to uh, have sort of extend continuity to Photoshop between an iPad Pro uh, and, a, and a and a MacBook or any other desktop map to say, oh, I, I see that you're actually uh, you're actually two feet away from a Mac that's also running Photoshop. Would you like to use this beautiful ninety nine dollar Apple Pencil and this beautiful nine hundred dollar iPad as a graphics tablet so you can edit directly? You, so you'll be running Photoshop on the Mac, but you'll be essentially using this as a Wacom tablet. Uh, boy, would that be an exciting uh, move for people who like me who have both. I, I know. I mean, most of the designers that I know now that are really serious about it are using their 13-inch, you know, iPad, you know, to uh, iPad Pro as their basically as their Wacom tablet, you know, connecting it via Lightning, you know, to the computer, and the latency is low enough that they. Have oh, that's been fine interesting. With it. So people aren't buying they, Wacom tablets anymore; they just use iPads. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's they they definitely like the performance better than the than the Wacom tablet. Um, so uh, so it's you know most people that I know have have kind of switched over to that process. Um, you know they they th they find the performance of the and I and I think the pencil works better than than the uh, I have a Wacom tablets right in front of me <laughs> for, for something else. And so I use the Wacom tablet a lot or even a couple of them at a time. And, uh, uh, so I, you know, but I use them because I can mechanically drive the, the HDMI input like it's not the uh, performance on the iPad now is, is pretty good. I, f I have found that those to be a little wonky, you know, the, I, I never get the kind of performance on my iPad, but I think that if you tune the system and you do a little tweaking, you can get it to, to work well. And I definitely know a lot of designers that have been using their iPad 13, uh, pro, to um as the uh, as the other screen you know for uh, for their for their mac apple apologizing a small number of user accounts in china have been hacked via phishing attacks apple said we are deeply apologetic about the inconvenience caused to our customers by these phishing scams however two-factor authentication might have prevented these attacks from taking place at all uh, if you had an Alipay account linked to the iCloud account, funds were drained from the Alipay through fraudulent app store purchases and subscriptions. And 
they notify you at unusual times of day, so you wouldn't notice. Some users said they lost hundreds of dollars through this uh, hack. I wonder if this has anything to do with the fact that Apple's moved its iCloud storage to China. Probably not, right? I, yeah, I think that was just an unfortunate. Just a. I mean, ha hackers are hackers. It's it's they're gonna they're gonna attack wherever they can. And um, is it Ali is like the uh, Ali Pay is like the most the yeah, largest. Right. Um, I I can't even remember what the. It's what Ali. Their, it's um, associated with Alibaba, but I wonder. You know, the other one is WeChat. So I, I don't know if uh, I don't know if it related to WeChat or not. Anyway, just just a just a point of interest. Um, Apple is apparently patenting some technology that is similar to technology Google announced in its Pixel Three phones, and that will be coming, I think, to a lot of Oreo users. Uh, a way to uh, fend off spam callers. This is becoming more and more of a problem. One analyst said that by yeah. next year, half of all Cell phone calls will be robocalls and spam calls. Apple has a patent uh, that would automatically recognize a fake call and warn you accordingly. Google apparently does this and has a button on the Pixel 3 that says, send that call to, uh, you know, to voicemail or ask that caller to identify themselves before I pick up, which would be very handy. And that is on phone. That is not done on network. Yeah, I That's think a lot of this stuff's going to start closing up. I mean, you know, like it has you know, to. Was, you know, it's become yeah. such a bane, hasn't it? Well, and the problem is, is that they got so good at it. You know, the the, the issue yeah. is, is that, uh, you know, when you ignore all those spam calls, it actually it, it's better for the system because you have a computer that's just basically casting across many, many, many different phones at the same time. And it's just reaching out with IP connections, VoIP, VoIP connections. It's going out and, you know, only coming back to a human when someone picks up the actual phone. So whether you ignore it or not it actually makes it easier for them to figure out who might actually be someone that's interested in Ugh. talking for a little while. Ugh. And so the system has gotten so efficient that it just it just makes sense. It's like a Nigerian scam. I mean, you just call enough people or you, you get across enough people, you're going to end up with someone to pull on. I so, wish they would learn so that I don't pick up and stop calling me. <laughs> yeah. No, the best way not to do that it is, smart. Is, is when I when I used to be uh, a freelancer. A lot of times, I you know I I would uh, have a lot of fun with folks when I had back when I had time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I used to my, my my thing was also to see how long I could keep a spammer on the phone because that's really what makes the system inefficient <laughs> is when you stay on. So my record is thirty seven minutes. Oh man! Where wow. and the key is when you you get the call and you go, hey, how's it going? And, and you go, oh, that sounds. That sounds really good. I mean, I, I think I might need one of these. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can, can, can you wait just a second? I, I got another call. Yeah. And, 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 and then, <laughs> and then you come back. Oh, sorry. Sorry, man. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, and, and, and you get them all excited again. And then you and then you start listening. You're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I got another call. And, and then you and then you jump off again. And um, you just see how long you can do it. And, and for a long time, I could only get 15 or 20 minutes out of people. But then after a while, you get good at it. <laughs> sorry, man. Sorry, man. I got, I got, I got, uh, I, I got lousy credit. Could I give you like a bank wire transfer? Like, I give you like my routing number for no, my no, account. But, you know, the key is, is that it's, it's got to be an easy, great sale. The, the, the key to doing this is it's an easy, great sale. You've got perfect credit. You, you you can't wait to do it. And you just keep on having people call you and you have to, on, and you put them on call waiting for just a second. And then you put them on hold and you put the phone down for a while and you go back to work and then you can pick it up again. And I have to, you just, I, 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 I got to say, I, I, I hate uh, telemarketers uh, and robocallers with a passion. However, you know that. You know that the when you're talking to that real life person, you're talking to Willie Loman. It's right. it's hard for right. me to feel That's, good. About, I do the same thing. I have the it's, same. It's someone. I, I'd much rather. It's, yeah. I'd much rather just like not answer the phone. But but it shows you. I, normally, my my response uh, partly is to this is that why do we why don't we have uh, laws that the uh, that the that the carriers have to follow in order to stop these things from happening? But I don't know what kind of law we could put into place that they. Could actually enforce. It's 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 so yeah, difficult. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna need better technology. I, I love the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Google's approach, which is first on the Pixel, and it's going to be going out Pixel three, and they're going to roll it out to other models of Pixel phones, and maybe just to Android in general. Is just simply it's brilliant. <laughs> where it's not just it lets you do call screening by doing uh, voice to text. It will just fill the, the little alert with not just here's the here's the phone number that's calling, but here's what they're saying right now. So you can just figure out that okay, if it says if it, if it is my aunt, I'm definitely picking up the phone. Uh, 
But it's 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 amazing how much power uh, people have to ruin anything. At the, I, I gave someone uh, uh, my uh, my soul number, and as usual, I have to I have to I, I add it by saying just to, just send me a text because I almost never actually answer the phone. Yeah, for so many for, for so many reason. reasons. Yeah, for yeah. That, yeah. For that at this reason, point, and mine, also, yeah. and mine my phone is set to do not disturb if it's outside of my uh, unless I'm expecting something. It's generally do not disturb if it's not in my phone. Uh, in my phone book and uh, in my contact list. And then I, what it does make you do is if you have a new client or a new partner or, or someone that you have to talk to, you very quickly put their phone number into your, <laughs> into, yes. your into your contact. <laughs> Otherwise contacts. they can't reach because you. It, it, it just kind of whitelist it. Cause I, my, my email is the same way where I, I, uh, uh, everything that isn't something I know or I haven't responded to in the past goes into a folder that I sometimes get to. <laughs> my problem is my yeah. doctor, uh, uses call blocking. <laughs> So it's always an unknown caller. And of course, I will never answer the phone for an unknown caller. Yeah. Yeah. But at least he leaves messages. I don't really. So I think I should probably just real quickly point out there is um, the national do not call registry. Which does which not you, work. Have you done it? it, it actually, I, I did it with landline phones. I haven't tried doing it with a with a cell phone yet. But it counts. Your, your mobile phone does count. So if yeah. you do receive phone calls from... Live I have it. people, I've done you it. are allowed I, to tell them, you know, yeah. I'm on the do not call registry, so stop calling but, me. But here's the point is these people are not in the United States. And so they just, with impunity, ignore the law. I'm on, the, I've been on the do not call list for all my phones since 2015. Does it feel like it's getting more intense? I mean, I feel oh, like absolutely. I'm getting 10 or 12 calls a day yeah. that are, that I just look down and go, no. I'm so gonna... I'm trying something called Nomo Robo. I don't know if you guys have tried this it is a dollar 99 per line and uh it it's a it's a little concerning because you have to give it kind of access to your contact list and stuff but I, they say we don't take it off your phone um and it does it does block robocalls i have it right now on my iphone and i haven't gotten a robocall since i put it on there on the weekend over the weekend so a lot of people swear by this um you can get it free for landlines and if you want it on a mobile, it's $1.99 a month per device. And it does seem to work. I, I was scared off by the reviews on the App Store, but I, but I think that it actually mm. seems to work pretty well. I'd just like to use this as an excuse for uh, to cover my uh, my timidity at having to suddenly have an interaction with somebody that I was not preparing yeah. for. Yeah, I don't answer the phone at all. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> if it's not my I'm wife, the, I don't answer it. I'm the person I, who has to rehearse saying hello, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I think my, hello. Oh, uh, oh. and the worst part is my message even says, I was like, don't even leave a message. I don't know. I know your I, message I is great. You know, I don't. Yeah. I don't, I don't talk on the phone. I love it. I love Alex. <laughs> yeah, like, like, you, should, you should send me a text or you should send me an email. If you don't have email, you should get it. Yeah. So. You haven't changed that in a while. No, I haven't. I, it's it's classic. I, I've actually re-recorded it a couple of times when I get new phones or something. Go, I go between services because it's just, I am really not interested. I'm not interested in picking up voicemail. I don't. I, I can't remember the last time yeah. I've gotten. I've actually listened to voicemail. Yeah. Mm. As Patterson in the read chat the room voicemail says, text instead. I don't do no. I you text me or, you don't or I do just that. don't communicate. I just don't <laughs> care. You know, like if, you know, it's like if I, if my mom calls, I pick up the, I, I, if I saw that she called, I call her back, but I don't care what she left on the message. Cause I'll just talk to her. Cause it's you usually know, so I, probably not worth listening to. Cause she's going to tell you when you talk to her anyway. Right. <laughs> exactly. Like I'd rather just have a real conversation than listen, than listen to someone talk. And then there, cause I have, there's lots of rules, you know, to, to leaving messages. Cause I leave messages every once in a while. You have to say your name, then you say the phone number, then you leave the message, then you say the phone number again. And if you follow that, it's much easier for people. Oh, to I always do that. Then, yeah. But a lot of people don't. They'll give no, you this long droning voicemail and then they leave the message at the end. And if you don't get the phone number all at the very end, then you have to listen to the whole thing again to, <laughs> to get back to it. You're like, ah, uh, uh, leave it at the front. Do so, you think, Helpless Corgis in our chat room says, I have a feeling robocalls are going away naturally once an older generation of non-techno literates are gone. Do you? I mean, the reason these are in on the upswing is because they're cheap to do. Technology's made it virtually free, just like spam, virtually free to do it. And they're using VoIP, so it's it's really easy for them to do millions of calls a day. But they, but ultimately, it has to succeed. And yeah. uh, do you think that there that at some point it'll just so be so worthless that people just stop doing it? 
I think no. there's a lot of things. Like that. No. I think advertising will eventually yeah. get there. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, I mean, it, you know, the the you know the the idea of interrupting, I think, is something that will slowly. I mean, it might take us twenty years, uh, but but I think we'll slowly filter a lot of that stuff out. I mean, my kids, you know, when they see when they see ads on TV, they're perplexed and upset, and like, <laughs> I don't know, you know, like like what is just, this? Like, I don't understand. Like, Give me YouTube. They, keep on inter- but yeah, you don't have ads on your YouTube because you pay for YouTube Red. Is that why? They they just don't watch anything. They they literally if I can't skip over it, they'll never go back to that video again. Wow. You know, like it's you know, it's just like they're not they're not interested and they or they'll see ads and you'll see them just immediately skip away to something else. Like if they don't see the five second countdown, they just go to the next thing. You know, like they're not gonna watch thirty seconds of anything for for a video. You know, and so they're you know, they're it's it's fun to watch eight and, or you know, nine and ten year olds uh, interact with media because they're so efficient. The modern the modern world is making us anti social, isn't it? I think so. We're, I mean, I, we're I, more I, globally I, social though. Yeah, but that's not yeah. real social. That's that's yeah, pseudo social. That, that's Facebook social. I think the problem is is that Instagram the social media social. social media in its current the current version of social media I would say is kind of empty calories. So we keep eating and we don't get full. You know like it's just like you just keep eating and you don't get full and right. by full I would say feeling related to anyone. Right. You know so you think that you're being connected it's pseudo to people, relationship. But it's all it's all kind of like it's just it's all like crispy creams. You're just eating a lot of crispy cream in no, most days. I think, so I think that's I, that's that's, I, that's the challenge. Maybe we're doing it wrong. Lori think, and Andy disagree. Maybe we're doing I, I think it wrong. I think Lori's right. <laughs> it's like yeah. So I do. I do agree that um, it's not the best version of being social. But I think that um, you know, for example, I just got to spend a couple of days with my um, first cousin once removed. We had to. We had to figure that out. And um, I'd only ever seen her once in my entire life before that. But we've stayed connected through social media, and that allowed me to have a relationship with a with someone that I'm related to, but who lives on the other side of the country. So that's what I mean by globally is that I think I agree that we we box ourselves out of the real world that's right in front of us, our friends that live next door or down the street, but we're also opening ourselves to be more social with people outside of our immediate sphere. So and, There's and I and I agree I agree to that. I mean, I think that when we have conversation, I think conversation is the important part. Like I have I have a, a couple uncles um and they range from very, very liberal to very, very conservative. And one of our pastimes is, you know, we have a group <laughs> messenger thing where we sit there and talk about politics. And um, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I I only see those uncles maybe once every couple of years in person, but I see them every day, you know, on you know in a in a kind of an ongoing conversation, and it's in, in kind of an enjoyable little uh, thing to, thing to do. And and I so I, I definitely agree with you that there are ways that we're using media to be social. But I think that when we think about looking at people's posts or their tweets or their you know other things like that, I think that is where it gets dangerous, where it becomes a uh, again just a lot of empty calories. People spend hours. I I have to admit I got. I didn't drop Facebook. I'm 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 still on Facebook. I I check it on my computer and everything else, but I took it off my phone and oh my and, and I think I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. It was just I suddenly got I don't know, I feel like I got a lot of my, my time back and my sanity back and my battery back and I just and so just so, taking it off so, the phone it was all I needed. Yeah. So so long as you understand the transaction, as long as you understand the effects of the of the uh, of the narcotic that you're you're engaging in. I think right. I think it's a, a pretty good trade off. I mean, I uh, I would not describe my uh, social ineptitude as a disability. However, I have often thought of uh, the, some of this technology that I have around me as if I ha- if it were a disability, it would be like an assistive device. The ability to have a social interaction with somebody without feeling as though the nervousness I get when I meet someone for the first time, I can have like a micro transaction that I'm very, very comfortable with. And then so many times after having these micro transactions over social media, I have made a, a whole bunch of friends that are welcome to who have stayed at my house, who who go out to dinner whenever we're, whenever we're in each other's towns. And I would not necessarily have been uh, the, the people who are my neighbors. Sometimes I don't know whether to say Hey, what I'm uh, I'm going to be staying up watching the Oscars. Um, I'll be making a couple of pieces. Once you come over, because okay, now have I obligated them to come over, and they don't want to, but they feel, and now and <laughs> will I be obligated to come over to their house and all this other stuff? So it's uh, it's so long as you understand the transaction that's uh, that's that's happening. Uh, and like Lori said, it's uh, there's so many people that I would not have met otherwise that uh, that uh, are 
now just again really good friends of mine the, the flip side of that though is that there are there are times where like if there's uh, like someone with like a half a million uh twitter followers and i am uh i am uh and uh, and they and this is somebody who is uh, very very sharey regarding uh, all of regarding personal details of their life so i i know what their wife's name is i know what their kids look like i know that one of the kids has a disability i know that you know you're sort of by watching the, by having this these sort of uh, little uh, observations into your life i think it does plug into the 100,000 year old social software that's wired into your brain about if i know these if i know these details about these people on a regular basis i must know these people personally and I, I, and uh, I don't want to overstate this, but sometimes I can feel myself about to like respond. Oh, that's too bad. What are you going to do? Like, oh wait, no, this is <laughs> it's not I, it's not necessary for me to show concern. It's not necessary for me to become involved because I don't know this person. This person doesn't know me, and I'm about to do. I'm about to react or respond to this in such a way that this person is at least a casual acquaintance, and they're totally not. So this well, and, again, and, as long as you understand the, the properties of the narcotic, you you can go okay. Yeah, I think it's I I I'm glad I'm. I mean, I I have the best. I mean, the reason the reason I had to take it off the phone is I literally think I have the best Facebook feed ever. You know, like I have it's wildly <laughs> diverse. That's you what know, they want you to think, friends. Alex. No, it's, I've got almost five thousand friends. I'm, I'm almost to the limit, and I have, I have, I didn't do it the way you're supposed to do it. You know, you're supposed to friend your friends or all that BS. I just went. I friended. You know, like if you have a big camera um, or a or a what, a dead cat, you know, on your on your dead cat is a, is a mic. It's a big oh. mic. With a fee. Um, not a, it's not really a dead Actually, cat. Actually, I friended people with dead, dead cats, cats, and I thought that was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So or or a uh, or a or a steady cam or a jib. I'm gonna friend you. You know, and and if and if you if you uh, and and I don't friend you because I'm trying to get anything. I just know you're gonna post things that I'm interested in, and and you're gonna post behind the scenes of, of shows and everything else, and then. If you're from Zimbabwe, I'll probably post you, or most of Africa, Zimbabwe, Rwanda, Kenya, I'll friend you as well. And once once you start friending people, what happens is it, it's like this spiraling process where you suddenly are friending lots of people. And and so I've got, like when when the Zimbabwe elections happened over the la over the summer, you know, I have 400 friends in Zimbabwe, and so you got to watch all these people that were Zano PF and MDC, and they're all arguing, and and it was it was fun, you know. And so and so I I think that for me it was addicting because I actually felt like I tuned my uh, I tune my, my process. And I'm also very careful about what I click on, you know, like I don't, I don't like everything, you know, I, I'm very careful because I know that it, whatever I do, if I sit there and watch it or if I click on it, if I even slow down a little bit, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna change with the, I'm going to get lots of those posts, you know, I'm going to get more of whatever I was clicking on. So I, what I, I'm very conscious to when I click on something that, that I'm telling Facebook, I would like to see more of this, you know, and, um, and so when we, when, again, like you said, Andy, when you have a, when you have a very conscious relationship with your, with your social media, you, it, 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 it's fun. I just realized that my addiction was too much that, you know, I maybe, maybe I shouldn't have it in my hand all the time. <laughs> you know, I, should, I shouldn't, shouldn't have, it shouldn't have the, uh, uh, the, the phone having all of those things available. See, you're making me want to create a new Facebook account. And then I realized, no, I've heard this spiel oh, it's before so great i've heard this it's spiel so from everybody with a facebook account you're just doing it wrong leo if you just did what i do you'd love your facebook account or twitter account or instagram account no but that's it's all trash that's, that's what i think <laughs> <laughs> that's what i think uh there's also something to consider though just not to get off on the same subject of social media for so long but the the younger generations of people none of us know what that's like and these are these are teens and young people who have been born and raised with social media. Yeah. It means something completely different well, to them than true. it does to us. Yeah, I admit I'm an old guy. Such a good know. point. Yeah. My kids only chat with each other. Like they don't – I don't see them posting stuff. It's just like these constant conversations with friends on mostly Roblox. Yeah. You know, like, like it's yeah. you know, it's like that's like their little process of, of them talking back and forth. But they, they seem to be chatter. I don't see them that maybe they, they don't have a lot of accounts yet, so maybe that's it. But they don't seem to post a lot of stuff. So you don't do you discourage them or encourage them? Do you think that uh, that social is their future? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, you you do have to make sure that they're doing other things. My kids are pretty active, so they're they're doing a lot of different stuff. I mean, but I, and I probably let them. I don't have this hard rule about how much screen time they have. Um, I, you know, I do keep an eye on it. Uh, the, um, uh, they do have to, 
there's a lot of rules. There's there's things that have to get done. Uh, there's rooms pretty much have to be clean if they're going to use a screen. So their rooms are, you know, impeccable most right. of the time, which is something. Do you I have didn't a funny up. little <laughs> rhyming thing that you make them say? <laughs> Sorry, please. Uh... Yeah, screen be on screen Facebook. Or no screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just it's just like just is if their rooms homework's clean, done. No if they're, screen. If they're, I like it. Rooms, yeah, room, you know, yeah, room, rooms have to be clean. The 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 homework has to be done. The the um, and then usually there's other things like right now they're learning, you know, times tables and so they have to have a certain they have to meet a certain, you know, they have to know multiplication new sets per week. Yeah, yeah multiplication time. You know, multiplication yeah. tables. Uh, we have an so they there's an interesting couple of guys in the studio today who are, have met for the first time. They've been friends for 10 years, more. They met in an AOL chat room playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Remember Yu-Gi-Oh! cards? <laughs> and they've stayed friends online this whole time. And they're and they're and they're I guess they're such big geeks. They're both here today. <laughs> Ezekiel and John. Or did one of you drag the other one and say, oh, here's something you, or did you both know about Twit? So Ezekiel's been a fan forever. Yeah. All right. And he's making John now. So <laughs> experience. But that's an example. Actually, that's a that's a really neat example, right? Of how you could meet in cyberspace and be friends. I got my I got my job at Lucasfilm by posting on AOL. Oh, there you go. You know, so it was there definitely I mean, and the AOL chat forums, that, those used to be the forums for technical stuff. And uh uh and I still have friends that I've only met probably three or four times, but I've known him since the early 90s. Yeah. Well, I'm just, maybe I'm just antisocial. Maybe that's just, <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the real truth of the, of the whole thing. Let me take a break. More to come. Our show today brought to you by FreshBooks, the ridiculously easy to use cloud accounting software that helps small business owners thrive. And I say that from personal experience because I started using FreshBooks back before Twit when I was just, you know, a freelancer going to Canada once a month to do a call for help up there in Toronto. And I'd have to invoice them at the end of every month for my time, my expenses, all of that. And I hated doing it. I put it off and, of course, learned a valuable lesson. If you don't send bills, you don't get paid. Uh, Amber MacArthur, I was bemoaning my fate one day to Amber MacArthur. And she said, you should try FreshBooks. FreshBooks had just started up in Toronto. It, this is back 2004. 2006 I it, it was awesome I was able to make invoices quickly uh, they did the currency conversion because I was billing them in Canadian dollars they do any currency in the world I could take pictures with the FreshBooks app of my expenses they'd go right into the the uh, invoices if you do time and hours you can have they have a little timer on the phone or a timer on the website it's entirely thing is that just do, the process of that actually was doing my accounting a lot of a lot of small business owners never really know if they're making money until the end of the year when it's tax time. Do we make money with FreshBooks? You know, at any time because you go to your FreshBooks dashboard and there it all is. See, it turns out they're keeping track of invoices. That's accounts receivable. They're keeping track of payments. They're keeping track of expenses. They'll even automatically connect to your bank account and update expenses daily. And now, because they know all that, they've they're doing. Don't tell anybody this. Real double entry bookkeeping of your stuff. So you have you can do reports your accountant or your your tax preparer will love, like general ledger and trial balance. That's all automatic. You don't have to know what that means, though. All you have to do is make invoices. You could share those reports, though, and uh, with people who do understand it. And that's that's now you're a real business. They add features all the time because it's a web app that, for instance, you can create proposals now with rich text content and images. You can accept e-signatures. Uh, and this, you don't have to sign up for any special stuff. This all comes with FreshBooks. Same thing with credit cards. Your invoice has a, a pay me button and your clients can pay you online with credit cards, but you don't have to do anything. It just happens. It just works. FreshBooks is amazing. You will get paid on average twice as fast and you won't be in mystery about whether you're making money, how you're doing. They've got bulk actions. They've got easily easy ways to delete businesses under your account if there's anything you don't understand, they've got amazing support and now Learning Hub videos. It is the way to keep your business running. And the app makes it so much easier. Join the 24 million people now who use FreshBooks to painlessly send invoices, track time to capture expenses, 
to do business without having to worry about the stuff you don't like, the paperwork. Try FreshBooks free for 30 days. Yes, free for 30 days at our special address, freshbooks.com slash MacBreak. This is, now's the time to do this. Get, get it started. Start the new year right. Freshbooks.com slash MacBreak. You will thank me when tax time comes around. And don't forget to put MacBreak Weekly in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Freshbooks.com slash MacBreak. Apple has fixed the bagel. <laughs> there were some complaints about the Apple bagel emoji. This is the before. It looks like it's made out of foam rubber. Perfectly flawless. This is the app after. This will be, Now that looks like a bagel you'd want to eat, doesn't it? Yeah. It's nice and fluffy. It's making me hungry. It's got cream cheese smeared on it. I feel like we you need Renee on, on this. Yes, because uh, he says topic. Montreal is the only true bagel. Yeah, and and I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but I didn't realize there was a difference. But I'm from California. Our bagels suck. So for, as far as I know, <laughs> bagels are all the same. Well, they, so. they ruined, uh, you know, you go somewhere like Noah's, you assume you're getting a real New York bagel. You're not. Even in New York, they've ruined the bagel because they're making them puffy and fluffy and the and the holes are getting smaller. But a real bagel is boiled first and baked and the holes are tiny. Anyway, apparently Montreal's the last great bagel. I have to say, looking at the bagel emojis, I'm definitely not having a Microsoft bagel. <laughs> that looks like, what, a donut? What is that? Google's not so bad. At least it's got sesame seeds on it. Samsung's toasted, and what the hell is this? Twitter. It looks like a macaron. <laughs> it, it looks like a baked apple or something. What the hell is that, Twitter? That ain't no bagel. It's red. That's and, the and, problem. And the thing is, is, these were the other options, and somehow Apple was, like, taking the task yeah, over of all theirs. People. Which the other one, the other one still looked better than all the other options, and so, but I, I applaud them for reacting so quickly. Um, well, to, uh, people care about their bagels. I mean, yeah, I don't think Apple's was that bad in hindsight, not compared no. to Twitter. But the new well, one is that, really the too after good. Bagel does look a little bit more like a fluffy Noah's bagel, though. Yes, so, no, I, I'm you're just right. Saying. See how small that <laughs> hole is? Yeah, yeah. Mm. But the schmear makes a difference, I think. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I really just I can't be a judge of a good bagel versus not a good bagel because I don't really know what that tastes like. But Where's the lox? There, I think there needs to be a bagel and lox in lox there. Lox or a little white fish. Mm. Sort of pushing. Mm -hmm. uh, Renee Ritchie does weigh in on Twitter. He says, <laughs> it's still round bread, not a bagel. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and, he, uh, and uh, he says he wants to file a radar with Apple fixing it. It says it's still bad. He says, this, this is what a bagel should look like. Well, I admit that... <laughs> While that it looks, won't make you fail a drug test because of the poppy seeds. <laughs> then it's not a bagel. Yeah, that is. I mean, uh, those bagels look a little wizened, to be honest with you. Oh, well, yeah. I, yeah. I, according to Renee, that's what a bagel looks like. Yeah, so. well, so there you go. I guess it's mm. the it's Montreal like style bagel. You Bagels know, maybe like I'll be able to see Renee in a couple of weeks, and if if that does happen, I'm gonna make him bring me some of these Montreal bagels so that I can decide for myself if they're as good think, as he says they are. I I think they're you're I, I think you're right, Laura. I think there's a there's a put up or I, I feel as though there should be a put up or shut up factor. If someone insists, oh, that's not pizza. This is pizza, or oh, no, no, that's not a marinara sauce. It's like fine, but once you pass. 4.2 minutes in your harangue, you're obligated to show me, quote, what a real marinara sauce, unquote, or what a real bagel is like. <laughs> uh, but this, it, it, I mean, it does, it, it, it sounds silly, and maybe in the case of the bagels, it is kind of silly, but it does, it really, but it does remind us how important emojis have become. Yes. Because, well, because, because it's not, it's not just what people like, it's what, it's how people communicate with each other. And so when people are feel as though they are trying to communicate using a symbol that doesn't represent them or doesn't represent how they define a certain thing, that becomes like the international uh, wrong way of doing stuff. Uh, Ace Tilton Ratcliffe, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a disabled woman that uh, I follow on Twitter, uh, is uh, I really recommend people follow her Twitter. Uh, she's a mortuary report, M-O-R-T-T-M-O-R-T-U-A-R-Y-R-E-P-O-R-T. -E uh, tweeted uh, last night about this. Uh, that's why I wanted, that's what, that's what this, this is a 
really cool to me uh, that uh, re re replying to retweeting the uh, a tweet from the Mojapita talking about exactly this issue that, oh if Apple uh, has received complaints and they've replaced the bagel emoji with a new design that includes cream cheese uh, and she's and she re replied saying we've revamped the bagel emoji but still don't have disabled human emojis even though disabled humans make up 20 percent of the population almost 60 million people uh, and it's true that uh, Apple will be including them in the next iteration and a lot of the delay is probably because of the lack of the, that uh, the uh, the emoji the international emoji committee has been slow in creating uh, standards for these emojis but just it just goes to show that even though it might sound silly to talk about a bagel when you talk about uh, if people are not if if you have people emojis and people and not every person is being represented there it becomes more it becomes a more important issue. It becomes part of the language that is not representing all of humanity out there. So I'm glad that she uh, she tweeted that just to just to remind everybody uh, of the stakes of emojis sometimes. Apple does succeed amazingly with its uh, iOS versions. 12.1 is is in beta right now and will be out uh, sometime in the future. But 53 percent of all iPhone or iOS devices introduced in the last four years are using iOS 12. That is an amazing, and 50% of all devices are using iOS 12. That is an amazing success rate, uh, especially when you compare it with uh, Google's success rate with Oreo. Um, I'm sorry, Pi, the latest version of Android, which came out before iOS 12 and is currently, <laughs> according to uh, Android.com, on 0.1% of all of all Android phones. Well, I, I, I always, I, I, I think that's woo-woo numbers. It's, I don't think that it tells the real story uh, that, uh, remember that you're talking, if, if Android P were available, were compatible at launch with the same number of handsets and devices as iOS was, I think you would see those 50% numbers. Remember that has to go it uh, under the old method. It has to go through carriers and has to go through uh, handset makers to reach the, reach the end user. So right now we're pretty much just talking about uh, Pixels. owners of pixel phones yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the essential, essential phone, phone, I think, yeah. is, is the only yeah, one the that's compatible phone. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the but the other thing is that Google has uh, it's the idea of an update to the operating system means something different on Android than it does on iOS because uh, so many features, even like core operating system sort of stuff, uh, gets updated not through like a regular, not through like a full update to the operating system, but through an update to like Google Play services, which is available to every phone that can access the Google Play Store. So you can be running like Android O and still have have essentially Android P features just by the virtue of the fact that you've uh, you've, you've updated this. And the other, and the other thing is that remember that uh, <laughs> you don't have to don't necessarily don't necessarily have to wait a year for an updated calendar app or for an updated uh, uh, a camera app because these things can be updated individually as things go. So it's so it's very very true that uh, uh, that iOS will always have this huge advantage and it's a very very real advantage. But it goes beyond simply saying oh well <laughs> look Android P only has 0.1 percent installation base. It's, it's, that's why it's it's kind of a it's not a it's not a fake number, but you re, I I've, I always feel like I have to jump in and clarify why it's not the same sort of problem as it would be if Apple were only get, if imagine if everybody had the ability to update to the very latest version of, of iOS on the day it was released and they were said eh, nah actually the, the number you. that would be comparing would be comparable would be what percentage of Google phones uh you know Pixel phones are running. Uh, Android Pie, because because basically you're saying 50 percent of all the phones made by Apple are running the latest operating system. So what percentage of phones made by Google are running? And I don't have that number. This is I don't uh, have that number. For this but is that would me. be a closer, a more risk, much realistic much more realistic for yeah. sure. Yeah. However, I mean, you know, even with Oreo, which has been out for a year, it's only you know less than 20 percent uh, of all phones are running Oreo. Um, so it's it's it's, that, it's problematic for Android because there is such a, a fragmentation yeah. and there's security well, it, issues with anything that's too old. Yeah, it's the but the, the the other factor is that when you're talking about Android devices, you're also talking about my bike computer. 
which, that's which true. is running Android three and my bike computer as well. That's right. Yeah. And, and yep. you're running a, and a whole bunch of like blister pack phones no, that cost like $5 right. that aren't technically capable. So again, it's, it's important to, uh, 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 this, this number shouldn't be downplayed because it is a real number, but the Android is a different ecosystem. Right. Uh, Apple Music is now getting some better lyrics. Amazon's always had very nice lyrics. When you uh, listen to a song on uh, one of the Echo shows, for instance, you get lyrics, and they're really good. Apple's music lyrics are now going to be provided by Genius, which is the king of the hill when it comes to uh, lyric databases. <laughs> you know, there's an app that I... I'm kind of surprised doesn't exist. Um, I was watching, again, I watch my kids do media, but I was watching my daughter trying to figure out how to sing to a song. And I'm kind of surprised that maybe there is an app that I just don't know about that I couldn't find it, that you can see the lyrics, but you can, it's kind of like karaoke, but it kind of mixes it in with the song. So you can hear your voice with the song. It doesn't, you know, the, uh, um, you know, so you can kind of listen to it as well as sing to it. Um, you know, I, 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 it's it's isn't kind of an interesting. Isn't that SingStar? Isn't isn't that the app SingStar? Am I wrong? Is that what it does? I can't remember. It's been a while since uh, since I've tried. But I think that's what it is. It's like karaoke, but you can use it on your phone, I believe. And um, you just kind of listen to it yourself. I think you do have to use the songs that they provide, though. I don't think you can just. You know, I just want to listen to. The, you know, that's what it seemed like. Like you know, it was it was one of those things that. It seemed like it would be something uh, that would be fun, you know, and it's not hard. Tech I mean, it is hard technically, but it's not. Um, you know, exactly. Uh, 20, Smule, even Smule ago, used to have remove. sing and I think they killed that. But now they've got uh, something that lets you sing along. Like here is um, <laughs> I don't know if I want to <laughs> hear this, but here's a guy singing along with Jasmine. I love that he's cosplaying that. And he's actually got a little too. fez on and a vest. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that actually, I, I thought that was a man bun. So now I think that, no, I think, now I think more highly of him than it's a fez. <laughs> so, but it's, he, I but wonder if he's seeing the lyrics. Huh? I think it's just the songs that they provide for that, though. I don't think you right. can just, like, listen to something and have it kind of mixed in. It well. just seems like it would be, if someone's listening, it seems like it would be, I, I, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I would never use it, but I, but I think that it, when I looked at it and looked at how, how my daughter was using it, I was like, I think that she would, she would enjoy that. But I, you know, then I went on to something else, you know, that, because, you know, taking out, for instance, even the voice, the voice is usually centered. And so usually you can, it's not uh, so hard to take it out. Yeah. Do a polarity shift right. and, and just pull the, pull the voice right out. You'll hear like a little echo of it, but that's, I had a, a uh, karaoke machine. I was a DJ a long time ago at, at weddings, and so having a karaoke machine was useful. We and, used to, I used to do it when we had turntables. You flip the polarity on the uh, cartridge, yeah. it would work. <laughs> I just had a button. You know, so I just, I just, you just push a button, and it was like I the think voice the idea gone. is that you're canceling the left and the right out by flipping the polarity, and so the the thing that anything matches, in the center, anything that was mixed in the center, center would, would yeah. cancel itself out, and so uh, so you get you lose a little bit of the song, but you get most of it and uh someone could just sing over top of it it was uh, it was quite nice here's a comparison maybe that uh, is more germane between apple and android the app store <laughs> generated 93 <laughs> percent more revenue than google play in the third quarter this is according to sensor tower and and, and, and i first mis misread that it's not 93 percent of the revenue it's just almost twice almost like, that, twice that, the that, revenue they could have said yeah they could have said it produced almost twice that would have been a better it. headline wouldn't it yeah uh, would have been more accurate. But that's not an insignificant amount of money. $18.2 billion in Q3 2018 from the App Store. $18.2 billion. Google Play Store, $6.2 billion. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not, the total amount is a lot. One way it or is, the it's, other. It's, it's not bad for a hobby. Jeez. Yeah. Well, I, I, again, the, 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 the great thing about uh, modern journalism is that we can produce a think piece on any point of view. Uh, if, I had a, if I had an Android blog, I would say new, new statistics prove that uh, an iPhone is more than twice as expensive to operate month after month <laughs> than an Android phone. Uh, there's a lot of money in apps, no matter how you look at it. Have you, have you gotten into kind of a... a, a I think I, I just can't do any more subscriptions. You know, I've gotten, I, I reached <laughs> yep. some point where I deleted like huge amounts of, I suddenly realized how many subscriptions I had done and I deleted them and now I'm just won't do it. You know, like I just, 
and, and I think that there was this, this push to buy stuff and then there was a push to do subscriptions. And I think now it, I just want to buy the app. Well, the money, <laughs> most of them, yeah, I agree. I wish more games are like that, but most of the games that are high revenue games are games with in-app purchases for yeah. items like Fortnite, right? Where the number one uh, game uh, in terms of revenue, iOS and Android for Q3 2018, I've never even heard of. It's called Honor of Kings. It's from Tencent, which is a big publisher of these style games then monster strike fate grand order i've not heard of any of these lineage m oh there's one i've heard of pokemon go is number five candy grush saga number six fantasy westward journey dbz dock and battle fortnite number nine clash of clans number 10 so this this uh this list gets shooken up pretty regularly clash of clans fortnite used to be on top um, I'm just amazed that I don't play Fortnite at all. And I'm just amazed, though, that there's now football players out there doing I, I was like, what are they doing? And they're like, <laughs> and even the, the announcers are like, eh, that's not a very good Fortnite dance. And I'm, right. It's <laughs> like, wow, that's that's uh, yeah. that's amazing. That's, that's making it difficult for me to get into mobile gaming. I just I'll, I'll see a game that looks kind of interesting and I'm almost and I'm about to get it. And then I re then I, I see that oh it's free with in-app purchases and it makes me think how much fun am I allowed to have with this right. before I have to cough up like another five or ten bucks I have a I I did buy like a, the, uh, the Nintendo Mini and I, I buy these consoles and they come out because it's the only way that I can get like cool or, or cool if old arcade I know that I'm I'm like eighty dollars up front but then nothing ever again and that's a feature to me. You have to give props to game developers that are making these um, free with in-app purchase games. They've gotten so much better at giving you a good quality game that doesn't cost money and then presenting you with options to buy. Um, well, and I always look in the reviews because reviewers will almost always say, oh, this game was pretty fun even though I didn't have to buy anything. Or don't bother because it's going to cost you $200 to have any fun at all. <laughs> yeah, and and there's been when it you know when the free to play games first came out, you really did feel like you couldn't play more than a half an hour of a game right. or maybe even a day or you know a couple hours worth of a game before you felt compelled to either pay or stop playing. And a lot of these games have figured out a way to let you engage in it yeah. and play it and play it for hours at a time, and then presents you present you with an option of you know if you want to enhance your gameplay, here's these things that you could buy, or they'll have events where um, they're timed events and in order to kind of like maximize the amount of time you have to get through the event, you can pay some extra money to kind of help you get through it. I think those are sort of brilliant ways to navigate the the free to play in app purchase um, sort of game, which it really is the dominant game on mobile devices and, and no game developer is going to just say, well, we're just not gonna do that because they know they're gonna make a lot of money at it. But if you can figure out a way to balance good gameplay, you're going to get, get the, the players are going to want to spend right. money. They're going to feel good that they spent, that they got to play as much as they did and want to continue to spend there. Fortnite's of course, a perfect example because you don't, you can play Fortnite till the cows come home without spending any money. The game it, mechanics exactly. are not affected by it. The, your ability to win is not affected by it. It's purely dance moves and costumes, decorative <laughs> right. and, stuff. And, and, it's, when and it makes millions. Excited. When people get excited about being able to play Fortnite, they're more willing to spend large right. amounts of money exactly. because they feel good about the game. They feel good about it. They don't feel like yeah. they've been manipulated into it. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I stopped playing Simpsons Tapped Out. I felt like I had to buy donuts. <laughs> had to. <laughs> Actually, Pokemon Go is the same way. You can play that game without spending a penny, um, but but it's uh, but it but you might be incented to buy things. And then, and then, of course, you have the other side. Like my favorite, still my favorite game. I know I'm, I get into ruts, but I still play Field Runners. You know, yeah. and I, I think that poor Subatomic Studios. I don't think that they're around anymore. I don't. I you they know, haven't I changed the thing in a while, have they? Well, the website hasn't been updated since January of 2017. Oh, so dear. I think that uh, things didn't. You know, they. I, and if you click on their their headline, you end up on some other page. Anyway, so um, you know, so I think that you know, I, if if they are, they should they should contact me because. Um, it's still great. If you haven't played Field Runners, it's amazing. It's the it's, awesomest I, game. It's just, I, I play it when I fly. I, I, there's this time between when you take off and when they serve the meal. And there's just, it's like a no man's land. You can't really put your computer up. You can't really, you don't know when they're going to come. And so that's when I play a round or two of Field Runners. And I, yeah, I just play the same level over yeah. and over again until I get to a point where I'm like, it can't, I can't do this any the more. The copyright on the page is uh, 2011. 
Well, it's, it, the last posting was on 2017, I think, or January 2017. And, uh, and I, I click the that, about button and I get Entertainment Today Insider News. I know. I know. I was like, <laughs> what? What? This, uh, is a, this is basically an ad, I think. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, I think what happened was, the field, like, for me, I never played Field Runner Attack. And I think that might, I might have been a lot, like a lot of folks because it required you to connect with somebody else. And, right. and uh, I just was playing on a plane well, it was guys, really hard if to you're, get look connected. here's the picture of all these guys at the subatomic guys and gals at the subatomic studio they're in cambridge massachusetts if you're listening to this show please contact alex Lindsay. he doesn't take phone Let calls me know. or but text him you can you can <laughs> find him on twitter him. or email him or find him on twitter i love twitter. you guys i love your i love your game i love you man I miss it. Yeah. It takes me a long time to go from one. I, I I did try Fortnite. I went out and and then I got killed immediately. And I was like, no, I don't like this game. Uh, it <laughs> looks like their last tweet was February 2017, and then they just disappeared <laughs> into a fourth dimensional fold and have never yep. been seen again. That is weird, isn't it? When that kind of thing like happens. it's like it's like a one hit wonder band, and you wonder what happened to them, where they are now, and can you can you get the band yeah, back together like a, for one one gig? There's well, probably a whole behind the music of behind the app. That's that's what they that really would be should, a great of show. Of the apps. Why doesn't so Apple do app. that? <laughs> I know. It was, you know, yeah. I I will. You uh, you might have said that offhandedly, but if I found out that there was a show, whether it was just some person doing it on YouTube or whether it was on Hulu, where you you, you did an entire like twelve episode season of just looking for apps that are good but they haven't been updated for like at least four years and it looks as though their social media is non-existent their url now goes to like someone someone else find out what happened to that app what are they why they stopped uh, stopped doing it i know that all of it will be well we basically realized that we put we'd be paying ourselves about 12 cents an hour with all the effort we put in and all the money that it made and we decided to <laughs> do better things with our tuesday afternoons but i would watch that show i would watch that uh, behind uh, hey where are they now sort of behind anthology the, yeah. series of yeah yeah yes. yeah mm -hmm. uh maybe this is apple's plan because according to cnbc they don't want to charge for the, all that billion dollars worth of original content they're creating they're this is they're, this was a shock when I read this. They're planning to mix free original content with subscription channels to existing digital video services on the TV app. In other words, the, the billion dollars you're spending on original content is just a come on. It's just window dressing. It's just window dressing to get, what, an I, Apple I TV wish, or an iOS device? I wish I had a company... I, I wish I had a company that was so big that I could spend a billion dollars on Lost Leader. <laughs> wow, it's marketing. I mean, they've I, got I mean, I, they've got Oprah a, doing this. They've got everybody. Uh, you don't know. need an Apple Music subscription, even. It's literally just free as long as you have a device. Well, no, one knows. Course, no one knows. This is the rumor. Yes, if if you yeah, have it, it seems, a device, it does seem surprising. Well, but but it, in some ways not because they're really pushing that TV app, right? I will say that yeah, if they yeah. if they bundled if they simply bundled it with music, it would be you know it wouldn't be necessarily free. It'd be free to all those people that already have music, but it really puts a lot of pressure on Spotify. You know because now it's like oh I sign up for Apple Music and I get I get all these shows as well instead of you know that would put an immense amount of pressure on Spotify if Apple started spending a billion dollars and just bundled the media together. So that could be another option. Owners of this is again according to sources CNBC uh, on uh, anonymous sources. The owners of Apple devices such as the iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV will find the still-in-the-works service in the pre-installed TV application. The product will include Apple-owned content, which will be free to Apple device owners, and subscription channels. It'll, they likened it to Amazon's uh, Prime Video app, which includes free stuff for Amazon's Prime subscribers and then paid stuff for those who you know want to buy additional stuff. Customers that was fairly simple for me too. I mean, I, as a Prime member, it just suddenly I had all these shows that I didn't know I had before. You know, it's not like I subscribed to something to get them. I just I already had it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Apple has twenty four original shows in production and development. Yeah, I think it it does point to I, I if if the TV app looks rather fallow and unimportant, I think they've parked that on the on yeah. the launch screen for something that they know is coming later 
I, it's, uh, I mean, the, uh, I often forget completely that I've got all this free TV content with Amazon Prime because I'm just not conditioned into having the Amazon TV, uh, Amazon video app on all my devices. And so when I complain that, oh boy, why can't I get Archer? Why can't I get it? this other t this other TV show that's not on Hulu? It's like, I, oh wait, I remember, I forgot completely that I've been paying for this TV content and now paying uh, a, a surprising amount of money for this TV content. Uh, the the uh, I, I still think that uh, Amazon Prime costs 80 or $90 until I get the annual bill and find out that no, you're about paying ten bucks a month for it, uh, and it's worth it. But well, it's it's amazing that I'm paying so much for a service and forgetting all the features that I get with it beyond getting free second day delivery. Well, and I and I wonder whether Apple's play is that hey, we're building this great garden where you as you know uh, Time Warner or uh, as other studios can grow your your vegetables. You know, like like we're not we're not trying to replace you. You know, you Netflix is basically like. We're gonna keep doing this with this contract with you until we totally replace you and drown you. You know, like like you know, like they're right. not they're not Netflix is not you know there's 700 shows and 80 uh, 80 movies in production this you know that are gonna be released over the next year. I mean they are replacing Hollywood. You know they're not they're not trying to they're you know they're they you know and 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 the reality is their content's good enough to do that most of the time. Um, but the I think Apple might be doing more of a we're gonna create big shiny things to bring thing people to this location but then they want to buy subscriptions from you and try to kind of uh it, that that might be a, a unique angle over what yeah. netflix and arguably and, what amazon and the, and the other thing and the other thing that they have the ability to say uh, touching on something we're, we just finished talking about is they can demonstrate that people on ios buy things they don't they, they've got money they spend money uh much more than they do on android devices and so if they say that if you basically if you let us if you include this pack part of the package in with a uh, uh, free for uh free for apple users and you have links below of hey buy, buy press this button right now and we'll let you have uh, another two seasons of this they will probably buy another two seasons of it of course part of the problem apple has is they don't want anything too edgy sexy political and yeah. religious uh, wall street journal's headline in this regard no sex please we're apple <laughs> uh, uh and they killed they apparently killed the dr dre uh a biopic vital signs. I was amazed when when they talked about that years ago. I was just like, they're yeah. really doing yeah. that. Apple is doing that. I just I didn't understand. But I, again, I think there's a pretty big model. I mean, you know, Pixar's a pretty big uh, world. Yeah. You know, so yeah. so it, I don't think that necessarily yeah, there's that lots that of stuff they could do. That, content. Yeah. Although, but when you're, apparently there's a show uh, that they're producing uh, that sounded a little edgy. M Night Shyamalan has a, a new series on there, and uh, they asked him to remove. It's about a couple that's uh, lost their child, I think, and they asked them to remove all the crucifixes in the couple's house because they didn't want any religious content. Mm. So they're that. I mean, they're being and I, you know, yeah. what it's Apple. That, that doesn't surprise me. They don't want to be yeah. edgy. They don't want to be controversial. I, I, I'm I'm keen to see five a few years after this really launches for real conversations with people who had to who were working with apple and how bad it was right. to be focusing on telling a great story and then you find out that you know there's a poster for a rock and roll band in the in the kids room <laughs> if it were just rock or just roll we'd be cool with it but if you could change it to like a, an orange juice an orange juice poster <laughs> like be so much better really <laughs> I, micro I, you know, great I, I people think... love micromanagement they can't get enough of yeah. it yeah I know we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago, I mean, yeah, but so. it like that is part par for the course. I mean, that is Hollywood. Yeah. There's some producer asking for some cockamamie yeah. thing that, yeah. that, you know, it's, it's, that is what happens all the time. One last story, that, and then we're going to take true. a break for our picks of the week. And the story is a sad one, of course. Uh, Paul Allen, who was co-founder of Microsoft, uh, worth about $5 billion. He owned the Seattle Seahawks of Portland Trailblazers. He owned at one time Tech TV, uh, has passed away at the age of 65. He had left Microsoft in 82 because he had Hodgkin's, um, it went into remission, and he uh, was able to lead a completely normal life. But apparently, uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma researched uh, last year. He announced that they had uh, restarted treatment for the cancer uh, just two weeks ago, and he's now uh, passed away. So um, a lot of people uh, with a lot of tributes, especially in the Seattle area, where uh, he was beloved because of his generosity his love of sports, his love of the arts. He built that amazing experience music project. Now it's called Mopop, which is a 
an amazing museum in Seattle. If you haven't seen it, the Frank Geary building is designed to look like a melted guitar. He was a huge Jimi Hendrix fan. Uh, I sorry, he was worth yeah. more than twenty billion dollars. Twenty billion dollars gave two billion to philanthropies, and took Bill Gates' uh, giving pledge, a commitment to give away the majority of his wealth in twenty eighteen. Yeah. He gave away a lot of his wealth uh, running Tech TV into the. <laughs> but it wasn't his fault. <laughs> that was why he sold it in uh, 2004. Um, yeah, he, he, he also was he also was part of the team that won the uh, won the uh, the X Prize for first commercial flight into space. Right. right. So that was I, I was I, I was actually there at the launch and boy you saw if you saw, you ever saw a man so happy. That's neat. <laughs> As watching this thing launch and watching it come back again, yeah. what 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 an interesting life he led. Not not to put not to cast aspersions against other billionaires, but you it's it gives an outsider like me pleasure to see that not only did he lead a life of adventure, but also he, he led a life of philanthropy. Uh, I I have a lot of res a great deal of respect for the company he built and the life he led. That's Indeed. it was a sad Indeed. sad piece of news. Yep, sixty five years old. Um, too early. Yeah, as a, as a, someone who's nearing that age, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely too early. Uh, let's take a break and come back in just a minute with your picks. Lady and gentlemen, prepare your picks. But first a word, I got a pick for you from LastPass. LastPass is my pick for your password vault. If you are using passwords, and we all do nowadays, you've got to memorize dozens, hundreds of them. You may be tempted to do things people do like use the same password over and over, make your password easy to memorize by making it your dog's name and your son's birthday. These are all bad ideas. And if your employees are doing it in your business, they could be disaster for your business. Uh, that's why we use LastPass Enterprise. And as a benefit of employment, give a copy of LastPass to every uh, employee. We want you to protect your passwords, especially when there are passwords. LastPass Enterprise makes password sharing convenient for employees, but keeping access to corporate data secure. You can completely customize access, including the ability to set master password requirements. You can enable password resets, restrict access as needed. Over 100 policies. Security reports, you could get shared folders. We use those. For instance, the ops team has a folder. The accounting team has a folder. So it's very easy to share passwords to the people who need access and keep it from the people who don't. Uh, I use it so much that I put everything in it, including SSH keys, pa uh, passports, driver's license. All our business information is in there. If you, uh, if you want, you can in, in, uh, turn on uh, required two-factor authentication. That's what we do. With the LastPass Authenticator app, it's really easy. It's just a button, a verification button, a notification that pops up on the employee's phone that they just push and says, yes, that was me, which I think is important. you gotta, you got to make this stuff convenient for your employees or they'll start doing things like writing passwords on Post-it notes and putting them on the screen. But with a multi-factor authentication, even that wouldn't be enough for a bad guy. LastPass password generator, I use it all the time, to make unique random passwords. And, of course, you don't have to remember it because it's stored in your last pass vault, by the way, on iOS 12, now autofill on your phone and tablet, which means when you install new apps, it just fills it in. I love that feature. It's also an Android. Just think that's so cool. Autofill, another thing that makes it easy to keep long, strong passwords. And your data is always safe, encrypted and decrypted only at the device level. Data in the vault always kept secret, even from LastPass. And if you use Active Directory in your business, employees can log into LastPass with their Active Directory credentials, which really means they only have to remember one password and for access to everything. We love LastPass. LastPass Premium for personal use. LastPass Families. That's what I use at home for our entire family. LastPass Teams for small businesses. And, of course, LastPass Enterprise. That's what we use. More than 16 million people and 43,000 businesses trust LastPass the number one most preferred password manager. Find out more. Go to lastpass.com slash twit. It's the first app I install whenever I get a new device. I love it. Lastpass.com slash twit. Andy Yanako, time for a pick of the week. Uh, my pick of the week is a movie this week that I found on Hulu, a documentary, and absolutely loved. Loved it so much I bought the Blu-ray uh, as, uh, as soon as the movie was over. Uh, it's called Strad Style. 
Uh, and uh, I don't want to. I won't give things away. I will only give you here. Here is the pitch for the movie. You have this this guy who lives in rural Ohio. I mean, rural with a capital R. Uh, and he gets to know a, an international concert violinist, sort of on Facebook, uh, saying, "Oh, I, you know, I make guitars and I make violins, and I could make a violin for you." And the inter international concert violinist says in response, kind of half jokingly, "Well, why, why don't you? Uh, oh, make me a violin. Well, how about uh, the, how about the canon, uh, il canone, this legendary violin with an amazing loud sound that Paganini used to play?" And he said, "Sure, I can make you a copy of that. Sure, no problem." Uh, and he he doesn't have like a workshop. He has he's doing stuff like on his sofa. <laughs> he's using tools and class from Harbor Freight and you don't really know if he's just a BS artist or whether he's kind of like a genius sort of person who's just a talented like instrument maker who doesn't need a fancy shop uh, and that this is sort of a mystery that I don't want to sort of reveal or reveal how things happen but it's an amazing story not only about the making of uh, this attempt to make this violin uh, and if he'll make it as promised for this concert that this guy is going to be performing, but also of a creative person and the sort of life he leads. Very, very interesting. Uh, it's not exploitative. Uh, it really it gets into the soul of, uh, of an individual uh, no matter what he's doing. Uh, and like I said, I loved it so much that I was so for I was so grateful to have found it. And then again, it was worth me <laughs> immediately finding out where I could get a copy of the Blu ray nice. and then buying it. This looks Loved fascinating. It. I love documentaries. Strad high, re high recommended. Style. A hot doc. <laughs> All right. Thank you for the pick. Lori Gill, what do you got for us today? So um, my pick is old and new all at the same time. It's the uh, Libertone Zip, which is a wireless Bluetooth speaker. Mm -hmm. um, they just recently updated to support AirPlay 2. So I don't mean a new speaker that's coming soon because they do have the Zip 2 that's coming soon. I mean the current Zip, the one that anybody who bought the Zip has in their house, with an update, it now supports AirPlay 2. And I'm all in uh -huh. on this AirPlay support with speakers. I have two HomePods. I have a Sonos Beam. Now I can add Libertone Zip to my collection of music that plays all over the place. It's a really good quality portable speaker. Um, it's cute, probably, too. It's cute, yeah. And it's probably the best quality in terms of the fact that it's intended to be portable. So it's it's intended to be used outside and taken with you to parks and picnics and things like that. Um, so it's got a really, really great sound. And AirPlay 2 compatibility compatibility to me is like a really great thing that I I look forward to more and more speakers being able to have. And a lot of companies have pledged support and still not come through. So Libertone is the next in line of companies who have pledged support for AirPlay, and it's finally available now. So if anybody already has a Zip in their house and they didn't know it. Just make sure that you update the app and then the app will update the speaker and then the speaker will be AirPlay 2 compatible. And if you don't, you can actually buy the Zip 2. It's um, not out yet, but I think it's coming late October or early November. So you can just get the Zip 2 and it comes with AirPlay 2 automatically. Nice. Good choice. Thank you, Lori Gill. Thank you for being here, too. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Take I love time being out here. from your busy day. <laughs> Alex Lindsay, who also has a busy day, but I bet he has a pick of the week as well. I do. Uh, so one of the things I just found myself using a lot, and I thought I couldn't believe that I hadn't recommended it all, but I did the little search on MBW picks. And uh, have you used Teyesu Sui Teyesu sketches? I can't. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. <laughs> Teyesu. Um, Teyesu. Teyesu. Uh, no, I never uh, heard of it. It's a great little sketch. Uh, you know, it's a great sketch app. It's it's available on the Mac. It's also available on the iPad. And um, I realize this is what I'm using most of the time. <laughs> so I have, I have the Pro version. And I, if I'm sketching something out um, that I actually want it to look like something, um, you know, this is what I end up kind of pulling out. And I just find that the the simplicity as well as the tools, uh, you know, are, are really nice. There's lots of great drawing tools on the iPad. It's kind of an amazing environment for for sketching. Uh, but um, I find this one, there's something about it that is just the right mix of clean and complexity that, that I, uh, that I definitely enjoy when I'm, when I'm putting together concepts, concept ideas for whatever we're working on. Um, you know, mine is 
less artistic probably and more detailed around trying to just visualize something that I need someone else to make a better version of. <laughs> so, but, uh, but I realized that I just, that this is one that I was using. I had to, I had to recommend it cause I've been using it for years now, I think. So anyway, it's a, it's a really good uh, sketch app if you're still not happy with the ones that you have already have. And it's nice. not, too, I don't think, I don't think it's very expensive to buy, but the pro, and I don't think the pro version is that expensive. I, I'm looking at you know, it on a it, site called Set App. I guess you buy Set App and you get a bunch of other apps, including Taya Sui. Is there are there other ways to get Taya Sui without doing? Uh, yeah, I just bought it. I I primarily use it on my iPad. I just bought it in the App Store. I just did a so Google. That, I think, so this is what yeah, I came that's, up with. Yeah, that's the uh, there is a there's an app for the uh, for the Mac as well. Um, so I think that might be what that is. Um, but, the but you can just buy it as a, as an app on the, on the app store as well. Nice. Uh, high, I, uh, how, high have, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have set up and it's actually pretty amazing. Just wanted to point that oh, out. Okay. It's basically, it's like Netflix for apps on your Mac. Got so it. it's pretty awesome. Oh, I should check <laughs> it out. So yeah. Taya Sui, uh, at Taya Sui, T-A-Y-A-S-U-I.com has a bunch of other stuff, including doodle book. Tayasui Sketches, Sketches Mac, Tayasui Color. So there are a bunch of different apps and you can find them all. But you're recommending Sketches? What are you recommending? That's the one. Sketches, yeah. The Sketches yeah. is the one that I use a lot. Now that I, I see that there's a bunch of other ones, I'm like, oh, I probably should have looked at those too. But but I, yeah, I, that's the one I use and it's actually the one my uh, my daughter uses a lot as well. She's got it on her iPad. Nice. She, she, this is the one that, that uh, she sketches a lot on too. Very nice. I wish I could draw. Maybe I could no, have maybe, if, maybe, if I had an iPad can Pro. Draw. And it's, it's not anyone can draw. It's just being able to draw well. <laughs> it's the, is that no, the challenge? No, no, no. It's 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 all about losing losing any contact with the desire to draw well and just drawing. Oh, yeah. honest to God, that's my like problem. As, as soon as you forget that that's you're what supposed I mean, to, but make I it wish I could draw. I mean, I wish I could draw well. We have to somehow yep. get. Uh, I'm still. I've been trying to persuade uh, one of my old friends, a guy named Ian McCaig, to to come do a class. You know, and we started trying to do a video about it. He is. He, he's the character designer for Star Wars, and he is. Um, the mo one of the most amazing artists that I've worked with. I've had. You know, there's a lot of amazing artists at Lucasfilm and Island, but but he is. Uh, he's so passionate about teaching people how to do it. He's, he gave us in the pixel core years ago, like these 10 steps on how to draw. And it was like how to understand weight, how to understand shading, how to, un and just give you this little thing to play with. And we've been trying to get him to re-record it. And it's, but literally you get through it and you're twice as good. <laughs> you know, as, you know, like, well, that wouldn't be hard. I, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I mean, it's just like twice and, nothing and, ain't much, <laughs> but I, I, I've seen him take someone like he had someone, I think, intern for him for like a month and he lives up in Victoria. I think it was a month that uh, he had them draw every day with him. And it was like, it was miraculous. Right. So we're trying to figure out a way to, I just to feel like I have an we'll, we'll uh, oven mitt for a hand and <laughs> I draw. Like, it's, it turns out, draw. it turns out it's just. I, I slowly get better. I don't do enough of it, but I. It, it turns out you just have to do a lot of it. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, God knows like I got else. the tools. I got all sorts of tools. There's a yeah. there, there's a page from a Robert Crumb sketchbook that I used to have like printed out and like pinned up in my old office, <laughs> where beauti beautifully drawn and beautifully lettered by Robert Crumb. It was a note to himself saying, "Wish you could draw better, then get to work." <laughs> he could draw very well. Or did anyway. Thank you, Andy Anako. Check out Andy's work at his website, I H N A T K O. Anako. Broken for now, but I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll fix it. It's broken, <laughs> but fixable. Uh, <sighs> well, then listen to him on the radio, Boston Public Radio, WGBH, every week. That, that works because I'm not responsible for running it. It can't break. It's, oh, look, there it is. There it is. Improve your drawing ability, then get to work. Nice. I want to print that out and frame it. Yes. And still I won't draw. Lori Gill, we love you. Thank you for being here. Come Thank back you. anytime. Deputy Managing Editor at iMore.com, Appaholic. And I can tell you had a show the other night because you're hoarse. Were you singing your heart out? <laughs> I actually got I got sick and I've I've been overcoming a cold so it's like this time it's not because of the stinging though I I do have a show coming up but the, well it's tell us about your show. Cold. Um, our next show is going to be on October twenty sixth at AVFW Hall in our one of our small suburban towns with just some other local bands. It's a Halloween show. <laughs> you ain't seen rock and roll until you've seen it at the VFW. That's uh. <laughs> yeah. That's that's where all the best rock and roll happens. 
That's what I'm saying. I've always said that. That's where the original <laughs> uh, acid tests happened. <laughs> no, you got to go there. Appaholic on Twitter, A P P A H O L I K. Thank you, Lori. And Thank Alex you. Lindsay, he's at the Pixel Core. If you follow Alex on his Twitter account, you may hear about wonderful things. A L E X L I N D S A Y on the Twitter. And I'm um, I'm speaking at uh NAB East tomorrow as part of a panel I and mean, we're just a bunch of really smart guys. I'm, I'm not sure how I ended up in the mix, but there's a, guys uh, from LinkedIn and Cisco and Microsoft and Facebook. All, we're all going to talk about uh, live streaming best practices and, and uh, you'll probably get some uh, behind the scenes stories. So uh, anyway, we're, we're speaking tomorrow um, together at, uh, at NAB East. And then also uh, we're still doing Patreon and we're, this will be a busy week at the second half of this week. So if you're, uh, if you're interested, uh, Come, uh, come join me on Patreon, uh, the Pixel Score, uh, Patreon slash Pixel Score. Nice. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. You can watch us make it live at twit.tv slash live or email tickets at twit.tv if you're going to be in the Northern California area and you can come by and watch us. You can watch us live. You can also get on-demand audio and video of the show. Downloads are available at twit.tv slash mbw or... Subscribe in your favorite podcast application. We have details on how to do that at twit.tv slash subscribe. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time. But now, you better get back to work because break time is over.